The following is a special presentation of the Liberty Flame Sports Network. Welcome to Lynchburg, Virginia for the 2014 Snowflex Games. It's a strange day for winter sports. The sun is shining, the thermometer's climbing into the high 70s. But we've got a great show for you today. We've got riders from up and down the East Coast who are about to wow us with some amazing tricks. We've got two type, we've got two uh, competitions today. We've got the Rail Jam and we've got the Big Air competition. And in the Rail Jam, we're the, the riders are going to be hitting the, the rails and the boxes, and in the big air competition, they're going to be hitting the jumps. And that's where we're going to see the flips and the tricks and the spins and all those tricks we, we can only do on video games. And two guys who don't need video games to do those tricks are Andy Finch and Ethan Acri. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's good to be here. I'm, uh, I'm Ethan Acri. This is Andy Finch. It's really good to be it's here. It's really good to be here. It's really good. It's you beautiful weather. It. Beautiful weather. It I is. got a nice sunburn today. So. Did you actually? You do look I a little did, red. I, I little thought that was just a normal natural <laughs> glow that you have. No, it's actually a, a legit sunburn. First of the year, so that's pretty exciting. Ethan but really does have a glow about him, though. Yeah, it's, thanks. It's a good time hanging with you. I appreciate it. But yeah, we are out here at the Snowflex game, second annual Snowflex game, fifth, I guess. It was like uh, the do games before. We're going to start off with Rail Jam first. A so Rail Jam it's going to be a couple features. I think, what have we got? Three total. I think we need to start with our start gate up there. I mean, check out the Snowflex Games start gate up there. That thing's legit. Custom made. And it's crazy windy right now, so it's uh, holding up against the elements. Yeah, and we start off, the first two features we got, we got a down barrel, our single barrel, and then we got just kind of like a barrier box. Uh, I think it's like 30 feet or so. The we come into two more features. We got a dance box, which is really just a giant flat box. I think that's going to be break the, dancing. Yeah, it's. I think that's going to be the, loose. the little bit easier of the uh, the features out there. But I hopefully I'm going to see some creative things on that if someone does a shot. Yeah, layback spins. Something old school. Head spins possibly. <laughs> that would head, be impressive. That's automatically the winner right there. Winner. We saw head. <laughs> Heads Chicken dinner. Right through that. Then we have the Gatorade, which is right. But we're going to call that kind of like the pyramid box. You'll hear it referred to that or pyramid rail. Sorry. And then we're going to come down here to the last the last three features. Uh, we have the Jersey Bear, which is going to be just kind of, it's it almost, I think it, we call it the Jersey Bear because if you go to New Jersey, you're going to see a lot of those bears that are kind of separating the uh, the interstate. I think the, I actually recognize it. Yeah. I think they actually took a section and I think, yeah, down the mountain. Yeah. We, we took an it actual happens. Jersey, but we didn't even build that one. We actually kind yeah. of just took it. And then uh, we have the shotgun, our double barrel right there in the middle. And then we have the flat box. So, Perfect. Yeah, should be really, really fun. Hopefully see a lot of creative stuff. So, I think some of the most popular features is the rail on the top right, skiers left, and then the Gatorade rail in the middle, and the double barrel. Yeah, so we're excited, guys. We uh, look forward to seeing you guys here in just a little bit. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. Second annual Snowflex Games. We'll see you guys really, really soon. We're excited.
All right, I'm Andy Finch here with Ethan Acree. Snowflex <laughs> Games here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Yes, we are on the East Coast. Yes, we are on the South, part of the East Coast where, do you see snow? Th there's no snow. That's what's so mind blowing. I think this is the only competition you're gonna see this time of year with such, such talented riding on the East Coast. It's mind blowing. And my, I mentioned it is darn fun right now. I've been uh, just cruising around the mountain the last couple of days, trying to get my shrouping on on the snow flex slides great you can actually even turn on the stuff it's not like i know i've been on some stuff where you're like on outdoor carpeting where all you can do is go straight yep. hey we are we're, up to action we're starting we're starting off with isaac shepherd dropping in all right going for that down barrel first feature on skiers Two. left yep there's the 270 cleaning the rail when we say clean that means make all the way to end again sliding the rail all the way to the end cleaning it with the 270 off Pretzel 2-7, going on one way and then spinning off the complete opposite direction. And ending pretty strong with the ski slide switch up, 2-7 out for Mr. Isaac. Way to start us off strong to Isaac there. I, I think it's going to be, I, I think what we do for a rail jam is the uh, the top two runs. Is that yeah, what we get five runs total, two best runs combined. So you might hear in surfing where someone gets comboed, you know, like needing to move on. Well, obviously it's just a top eight here. So what do, you, what do you think the strategy is going to be going forward? So they know they have the five runs. I think me personally, when I was when I was snowboarding more, I always wanted to get my best runs out first and then just kind of build on that. So I think the first couple runs, we're going to see people, they had some warm-ups. They might get a little bit of rust off, but really trying to solid, gonna solidify a really, really solid run here to start off with and then just kind of build on that if they can. Just kind of give them a little bit of talking a Talking about a strategy, is, uh, you know, those riders definitely need to keep that in the back of their mind as they're preparing as they're practicing and I think it's really smart to have two different runs yeah definitely uh, come out kind of nail a solid one that way it takes the pressure off and then kind of come out swinging guns nice. a blazing exactly we have Carson Carr dropping in now all right first skiers left rail 270 coming off that end of that nice and clean coming in switch nice. 270 out the pyramid rail all right, we're hitting the box feature. Skiers left, 270 on, 270 off. Oh. There you go, another clean one. And then it's kind of exactly what you were talking about before we had the first drop, is you can actually grip on it. So you saw Carson just really hold that edge as he came off the Gatorade. He was able to hold that edge, no hand touch, anything like that, work it over to the flat box. So really a solid run again from Carson as well. I don't think, I've been watching a lot of the warm-ups, and I don't think we're gonna see a lot of falling today. I mean, knock on wood, but we've seen a lot of, a lot of solid riding today from pretty much everybody. It's been super impressive. Well, they definitely have plenty of time to practice, and you want to see them pushing a little bit. You almost want to see little falls. That way they're kind of getting after it, pushing their level. All right. Samuel Miles dropping in. There's a slide 270 out on that first rail. There's the pretzel. Is that 450? 450 out. 450 out. And he just gapped it 180 all the way down to the bottom. A little bit of tap on the end of that jersey box. I like the dirty jerseys box. The dirty jersey. I'm actually kind of up in that area right now, so I see right. those How's often. How's it It's been good, man. I'm born and raised in Virginia, headed up north. Just kind of an adjustment there for two years, but I like it now. It's really fun. I enjoy it. Very nice. I enjoy coming back, though. It's kind of like a family reunion every time we come back. Here we go. We have Tim Stelzer. Tim is actually a, a college student here at Liberty University. I believe he is a senior. Dropping in switch to the first feature, ski slide, two seven out, headed switch again, very, very technical, headed to the pyramid. Oh, nice, look at that, switch 450. Definitely getting nasty. Oh, oh. just couldn't quite hold the edge Definitely the most bottom. technical trick we've seen so far with the lip slide, switch up 450 out. Yeah, Tim, Going for it. Tim, I had, uh, when I was riding here with the school, I had the privilege of riding with Tim quite a bit, and there's nobody that pushes everybody more, even as a snowboarder. I felt a lot of motivation and really being pushed to my limit by Tim. He always is the one that comes out, rides his hardest, rides with the ability. But talking about riding really hard and very, very technical, we have actually younger brother John Stelzer dropping in now. Yeah, I remember last year they had a really strong showing, taking up those top couple spots on the podium. So definitely guys to watch out for today's Rail Jam and Big Woo. Air. Two switch cuts <laughs> on that <laughs> ledge. <laughs> and there's the, the pyramid. 450, 450 out. That was nice and synchronized jinx. There, 450 on. 2-7 out. 2-7 out. That was extremely, extremely Can we just say technical. spin to win? <laughs> He's, he, it's almost, John makes it so hard to even call tricks because it's just so technical in and out from the top to the bottom. It's exactly what the judges want to see. Every single feature, 
pushing it. We'll try and time. stay on our B game while he's on his A game exactly. there. <laughs> exactly. Calling tricks here. Make him just look foolish. But uh, that was John Setzer next. Kellen Baker approaching Skier's left bar. Or big pole jam there. Yeah. <laughs> There's the 270 out off that. Coming in switch. The 450 out. You notice there's a nice little landing off that to get some transition so it's nice and smooth. I was actually really enjoying that. And then there's the nice. Another going. switch yeah. up. I think that my favorite feature personally is the, going to be the, the pyramid, pyramid rail, just because it's kind of got the amplitude. You can kind of really go very, very far, send it as, as we like to say, pretty deep down. So we're going to see a lot of, I think, bigger spins off of that feature. We've seen a lot of 450s. That's almost like standard on that feature right now for these Well, you guys. definitely have a little bit of air time coming off it. And, there, you know, there's some also a little bit of creativity options if you want to approach it from the side. I know I was kind of going for that. I haven't seen any one practice that. but No one's quite up at your level, I guess, you could, I don't know. Well, I wouldn't say it's crazy. <laughs> tech. It's just something a little bit different, you know. Here's a younger brother to Kellen, Mr. Drew Baker. I guess we got two sets of brothers out of today. It should be really, really fun. I will Battle the brothers. Exactly. Ah, just couldn't quite hold it there at the bottom. I know myself personally, I always loved when I competed with my brothers. They'd always push me to the actually max. So we actually. Where'd you fall in line? Oldest, youngest? I middle? was actually middle. Uh, I was the middle. So everything was lot. unfair, and I wanted things to be fair, and I had uh, that sense of, like, you know, you know, judging everything. So. Okay. But uh, yeah, pushing by the brothers. So two sets of brothers, I'm excited to see that. I've always, I've always watched the Seltzer brothers and how they progress, just pushing each other and pushing each other. Yeah. So having a whole other set in that is pretty awesome. Back up to the top now, back to Isaac. Isaac had a nice solid run. Ooh, waving to his fans on the side of the course. That's one way to do it, 270. 27 on. Here we go, pyramid rail. Nice, Retzel 450 out. Retzel 450, there Right you go. over the nice little gap, transition onto the box, and there's 450 on. 450 on. So those, I, we're not seeing even a lot of 270s. We're seeing a lot of 450s, a lot of big spins. Um, I think the judges like to see that, but they also like to see you mix up your runs. Absolutely. Creativity is huge. That's why I mentioned just approaching that pyramid from the side, you know, something you can do. I know some of the stores were talking about, man, he's doing the same run that I'm doing. You know, well, change it up a yeah. little. Yeah, you got to find a way. To, since the riding caliber is so, so high, you have to find a way to really separate yourself from the field, and that's one way you can do it is being very, very creative. All Here's right. Carson coming back on, just kind of just washing out there at the bottom. Wasn't the cleanest. Uh, kind of just landed on his tails on that pole, not fully getting centered. You want to see these guys really get locked on, have that that rail directly under their, their boots. There you saw him locked on on that pyramid. A little shifty out there for a little bit of flair. Dumping some speed. 2-7, two 2-7 seven, two two seven. Seven I actually like seeing him dump speed. It's actually almost more difficult to go slow on a rail or a box just because you have more time that you can fall There's off. Where you got a lot of speed, you can just fly through it. Exactly, and you can add a little bit more style. I think that's one thing. Sometimes that can be forgotten. Everybody's really focused on the spins and kind of... Oh, just completing their maneuver. Yeah, exactly. So I like to see, like you said, slowing up a little bit, adding some style, being unique. So hopefully we'll see that. Woo! That was a close, that was a close call. My voice is going <laughs> to <laughs> Here we go, all right. <laughs> He slide two seven out, throwing a little grab coming off that pyramid. I'd like to see that. You talk about that style. Two seven on, just a little bit of a hand drag there at the bottom. That's going to be one that he wants to dump away again. We're doing five runs, and the riders are taking their best two combined scores. So, really got to throw down two runs. The judges are looking for things to be a little bit more unique and different on each of those runs. Here we go, Tim Stelter dropping back on. I think he had the the run to beat. It wasn't the cleanest run, but I really really enjoyed his technicality. I really enjoyed how big Tim goes. Two seven on. 2-7 out, losing the ski. And that's something you got to love about this format, having five runs. You know, you, you have three throwaway runs, which allows these guys to push it and kind of see what they're capable of. Yeah, and it takes the pressure off a little bit as well. I think it's when you can really sit back and enjoy it and just relax with the yeah. five runs. It, it and best of both worlds because you have to have two combined scores, which you got to have a little bit of consistency. It's not just right. a Hail Mary. Exa yeah, no, exactly. I get one run to line five. You still got to show a little consistency, so definitely best, best of both worlds. Yeah, and no, exactly. And there is, there is some pressure on the line here. We have a lot of college students. We're actually money here. Speaking of just kind of what Snowflex has offered as, as prizes, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty ridiculous. For first place, we're looking at $2,000. Second place, we're looking at $1,200. And then third place, that's $800. I know when I was in college, that's a that's a heck of a lot of money right that's there. That's serious just like, dough. Yeah, it's serious. Oh, serious beautiful. John Stetzler, 270 on. And then switched it back up to 70 off. That was beautiful on top rail. Having a really good run here as he spins off that pyramid rail. There's the 2 sev. A little shit on the box. Coming off switch. That was a very solid run. I'd say that's our best run yet so far. 
Uh, see what the judges end up. Was he just shaking his head or out of laughter? I don't. I can. I can never tell with out. John. He is such a perfectionist. There's sometimes where he does just a crazy run in my eyes, and then it almost looks like he's shaking it off like something that's gonna throw away. I just. Did you see that stuff? You gotta <laughs> sell it. There's a big part of selling your run with big smile. You don't have to claim it. Some people love to claim. Kellen Baker dropping in. He was actually one of the Snowflex campers. That's the first time I met Kellen when I was up here uh, coaching at the camps, wonderful camps that Snowflex puts on. But he is also very, very technical. He's had a lot of different tricks, a, a bag of tricks, really. And uh, so hopefully we can see him throw down something very, very smooth. He was spinning big up top. There he sticks 450 off. A little bit of a pants adjustment halfway down. But uh, that was. I don't know if they're going to deduct points for that. I'm not sure. It depends if you're actually showing Moon or not. Yeah. <laughs> that's, Judges that's don't appreciate <laughs> that. But, you know, most of these guys got the backup layer. So <laughs> we're good. That's the, that's the one thing with Snowflakes. It's so fun. You can. It's the one of the only East Coast places you can ride in the summertime. But it can give you some mean rug burn if you're not careful. So you got to yeah. layer up. got to layer up. Absolutely. Drew Baker, brother dropping in right behind his other brother there. Switch up. Switch up on that box. Just, yeah, just kind of backseat a little bit. And there we got a nice little slide on the jersey box to finish things up for Mr. Baker. Beautiful day out, a little bit of cloud cover. It's actually kind of nice, you know, that, that sun, it was warm. Yeah, but like, like I said earlier, got the sunburn, so I, 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 don't, I enjoy the clouds We do bit. not have to worry about snow melting, so bring it on. <laughs> Year-round riding here at the Snowflex Mountain. Here oh, at Liberty so College. Good. So good. Isaac Shepard dropping back in. 2-7. Nice and clean. He kind of had a little, fobble, or a little fumble up there at top last time. Ski slide 2-7 out. Headed to the Jersey Barrier. Kind of a ski slide 2-7. Went a little bit past the 2-7 there. But nice run from, from Isaac. Um, I, I think for me personally... If I was up top and I'm watching the Stelzer brothers and kind of what they're putting down right now in John's run, I think that was Isaac's like third, third, fourth run. I think third. Third. It's it's time to time to, to step it up. Just, so let's see if we're gonna. These should be the topper runs now. I think. Yeah, I've already seen guys starting to stick runs. There's a nice little swish. I like how he popped onto that rail. Here we go. C slide 450 out, stomping it nice and clean. Oh, I like, <laughs> like it, the one ski slide. I always appreciate creativity. That was one thing. I couldn't keep up really um, skill-wise in my snowboarding career, so I always wanted to be the one that was the most creative, trying to do creative things. So you can always appreciate when guys come up and try to be I really, really neat. I haven't seen that before. I mean, I'm sure it's popular in ski world, and, but I haven't seen that. I kind of liked it. Oh, Ooh. skipping the gate, going wall right to a uh, wall ride. A little extra flair. I'm not sure how judges are scoring that since it's above the start gate, but hey. Definitely gets the, the vibe up for the judges, getting them stoked as he two sevens out of the top rail. 450, 450 switch out of the pyramid rail, dumping that speed for this finishing box. 270 nice. coming off switch. Nice clean run. I like that. And I did like starting with the wall ride. Yeah. You know? He boosted onto that thing. And which, I mean, it shows you if you can see at the top where they're starting, uh, you can build plenty of speed on this material, on the Snowflex material. Uh, it's a nice pitch, too. It's uh, actually about an 18-degree pitch, which is about the same as uh, half pipe. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Kind of what they're running the 22-foot pipes at. Tim Stelter dropping back in. Tim Stelter is uh, going to be a father here in about six months. Really? Yeah. So he's uh, he's riding for the wife and maybe the newborn uh, little girl that he has. He kind of just just kicked that out a little bit. Went way back seat. But that's another good thing about Snowflex, kind of bragging on Snowflex a little bit. Underneath it is about a three-foot foam pad. So when you take those big falls like that, it doesn't quite have the impact as what falling on, like, East Coast ice, what we're typically used to at normal mountains. Yeah, so you that's definitely got to appreciate that. You, you always do. have a little bit of padding. I mean, some days you got ice on the East Coast, and here you never have ice. It's always got a little bit of padding. Yeah, it's a, it's it, it saved my saved my butt a couple times here when I was, when I was riding here. <laughs> John right. Stelter dropping back in now. There's a nice 450 spinning on down that first ledge. All right, Pretzel, 450 out, switch coming in, keeping the nice flow as he goes in, switch again, 270, 270 out. Just uh, he's all over this course with the amount of spinning that John's doing. As a judge, you have to appreciate how big 
he goes on every single feature. Every Judge has got to be on it. There's a lot going on. We're, I mean, you notice we're doing rapid fire here. Uh, Kellen Baker already dropping in right after we just saw John's run. So, yeah, Judge has got to be on top of it, making sure they know exactly what each rider did. As we'll try and do the same. 270 on. Going for the 450 out. Coming a little unstuck on that landing. Uh, right above the box here. Here's the disco dance floor. Spin to win. We might see a head spin on there, lady. You never know. <laughs> I'm I, hoping, man. My fingers have been crossed this entire time. I would not count that possibility out. Didn't quite get the 2-7 out in any of there. Throw away one for Kellen. That's all right. He's got a couple solid. He has had some really good runs. Uh, Drew Baker's going to wrap up the third runs here. Still two more to come. Drew's looking to really kind of stomp his first you know, solid run from top to bottom. So let's see if uh, he can put one down coming after you know, the older brother right now. All right, Drew Baker trying to get locked on that first box. Carrying tons of speed. Wow, we said that one really, rail. really deep. That was a 270 off. All right, switching up on nice, the there you go. jersey We're box. looking for a clean one from Drew, and he actually he called put, that, it. Yeah, put down a clean one. I get think some he points. Heard you. Yeah, I think he was. This is, uh, this is the final now. We've got the final run for the men's ski rail jam. We're going to start back up at the top with Isaac Shepard. Again, this is where they have to go as big. This is where all the money's at right here. Isaac Shepard dropping in for his final run, heading down to that uh, single barrel. 2-7 on. Nice and clean, though. Cleaning the rail. Nice and clean again. Is that 450 that or 250? 450 off. There you go. Look at that wind up. 450. Over the, I think <laughs> he's going 630, wasn't he? <laughs> I think he's stuck at the 450. No, that was 450. 450 right. to Thank switch you. it out. That's all right. He's there when they're spinning that much. It's hard to you lose track really just like immediately sometimes. You just got to almost slow it down in your mind. Yeah, but, do not look away. Do not blink. But there you go. Isaac Shepard throwing down a, the 450 there to end final run. This is the make or break. This is one run that I think if you if you are looking to get to the top of that podium, you're looking to kind of get in the top three. You gotta really really come hard, and I think this is this is the, the time to do it. Yeah, this is definitely where you look to throw down the hammer as far as which run's gonna score the big points. Take chances here on that last fourth run. Can you repeat that? As he comes switch, just does a nice key slide all the way. 450 coming a little stuck on that pyramid rail. All right, as he resets for this final. Not giving up. There's that <laughs> one C slide. One <laughs> I like that. I'm not going to lie. It was fun. But, uh, awesome way to start out the day here at the Snowflex Games. We got Samuel Miles make? dropping in, going for the wall again. Being a little creative. I don't think the judges are going to count that, but it's just kind of getting everybody their stoke level up, I guess you Absolutely. could say. Absolutely. Even spun onto the wall. That was awesome. A little alley oop onto it. Switch up. It's 2 7 out. Come in and switch to the pyramid. Oh, that was really clean. Really Very clean. Switch 450. Switch to side 450. 2 7. Ah, just washing out the bottom. Oh, you can see the frustration. <laughs> He's just had a really solid run going and just losing a little bit. A little too much on an edge. You know, when you're on these boxes and rails, you want to have your skis or your board as flat as possible, have your body very centered over your feet. Uh, and, you know, as we just saw there, get a little behind. It's always frustrating when you get, the, you know, just solid, solid tricks from the top and then you just kind of lose at the bottom. I know that feeling. So 2-7 on from Tim Seltzer, 2-7 off. Come in and switch the pyramid. Got ski slide. Oh, that was, was it 630? That was 630. 630. Coming Not time, but to it, the double yeah. barrel ski slide two seven out. That was impressive. That Dude, was that impressive. Was, I like the kind of head bow for as a claim. That was good. <laughs> kind of like, thank you, yeah. thanks for coming. I think skiers refer to that as, uh, as the after bang. So after right. they land it, then they just kind of you know they claim Absolutely. it. Yeah. So that was a really good yeah, one. I don't know. I add extra points for that just for the style of it, but I don't know if the judges are actually gonna. That's why you're not judging. <laughs> but that's, right, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm in the booth. <laughs> there is some truth to that though. It definitely affects it. A score. Any good coach would point that out to their athlete. And that's a style for days. John Stelter, man, he just makes everything look so easy, so clean, and he just goes so big. Ski slide, 450, coming in switch, dumping off the speed like you said here for the slap uh, flat box. Switch uh, three on. Hanging on. Hanging on. It's Headed over to the grass over in our area, our stick. neck of the woods. Yeah. Not quite. 
the jig grass. This is nice. It has a nice forest green look to it, though. Yeah, but that's the that's the the benefit is you never have to cut it. You know, so when I was working here, we never had to cut the grass. Yeah, you don't really worry about it's grass like stains yeah, either. But it's kind of like a vacuum, I guess. It was sliding great today. It's not like you're just gonna all of a sudden stick. I mean, you see a lot of the urban jibbers. They'll hit a rail and land in the grass. They just stick and front flip out of their landing. This stuff actually slides pretty decent. Kellen Baker dropping back in. Final run. 2-7 on. See that little adjustment just to make sure he stays on as he tips the ski. But he was locked. There's the 270 out. A lot of speed from Kellen coming in the final feature. Just dumped it a little bit there at the bottom. Nice little switch up. 2-7 out. Kevin, uh, I, watch, I watch a lot of videos from Kevin this season. He's uh, had a really, really good season. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good footage. And one of the things I noticed from Kellen, he's very, very technical. And we kind of saw that there on the last feature. Absolutely. Got some spectators hanging out. We're pretty packed down here at the base here. We got uh, some fans lining up our, I don't know, you got a little bit of a magic carpet there. Take yeah. the riders up, or uh, fans, excuse me. Drew right. Baker coming off a little bit earlier of the, the first box. Come to the pyramid, ski slide, switch out. Switching back to regular here for the final box. This is Drew's final box. Two seven on, two seven off. And there you go, that wraps up the, the ski rail jam. What do you think? That was a great way to start out the day. Ski is really showing uh, what's possible here at the Snowflex Mountain. Yeah. Snowflex Games. Snowflex Games. This is uh, just a super fun event. A lot of good kids out here, not just in skills, but uh, some great personalities here. It's been really fun hanging with them these last couple days. Still Billy. Yeah, rolling into the snowboarders next. Let's yeah. give me the rails. Let's kind of go over the, the rules of the rails competition really quick. Each competition, our competitor gets two runs. Best top scores, I think we talked about that. The top two scores are the five runs that they get. Those are going to be the winners right there. So riders judged by each run individually, taking the top two out of those five. You must hit all three features. That's key. We actually At least had a, if you want a decent score anyways. Yeah, we had Samuel taking the fourth with the wall ride. That doesn't count. So it's the, it's the yeah, three after the counting. gate. After the gate. So that's, uh, that's what we're looking at. That's what the judges are looking at really to kind of score the top two runs uh, we have all right here we get a little bit of a replay of Isaac Shepard uh, he was first. Our, yeah first one to start things out there you saw the 450 out there's the pyramid rail nice clean 450 sending it pretty deep and then here you go at the bottom He's uh, he ended well, you know, with the 450 there. I think the judges like to see that. I don't think Isaac spun a 450 that I know, so to step that up at the very, very last run, 450 onto the flat box. You know, I'm I'm impressed with Isaac, kind of knowing where he was at, probably in the in the ranks there, and knew that he had to go really big at the end. So I I, I like to see that from the riders. So uh, Samuel Miles up. We're gonna get a little replay here. Check out his run flying on that Gatorade feature, the 450 out. Actually, he switched up so it'd be a pretzel, and there was coming in switch. There's a very clean 450. Sam was having some great runs. Yeah, he did. He did. He was almost like the quiet one, so to speak. I think we uh, we saw him hit the wall, having a lot of fun. So it, it's it's just kind of a really hard thing for the judges, I think, right now, because we saw so many good runs, so many good tricks. It's just I'm glad we're sitting down here just talking about it instead of you know figuring out. They brought in some out. great judges. I mean, it's not just local judges. Not there isn't good local judges right. here, but I mean they brought in true professionals, flew them in, uh, had them drive out. I mean I know someone drove four or five hours to get here. Yeah, so that's uh, that's always a good thing, especially for the riders knowing that they're going to be judged, you know, accordingly. I guess you can say with uh, some really legit judges. So and I know a couple of my just from my days of competing, you know, competing on the professional circuit for 14 years. Uh, a couple of them I definitely saw on the prof professional circuit. So uh, definitely legit here at the Snowflex Games as we're throwing out $18,000 here. And cash uh, prizes. So they have to be legit. When the when the stakes are that high, <laughs> you have to have legit guys. And we legit. do. We have, we have three legit judges. Everything about so. it, even the production here. Uh, we got to definitely thank uh, Dragon, K2, Smith Optics. But here we go. Tim Seltzer, older of the two brothers. I was really impressed with Tim. I, I really liked a lot of his style. I feel like he kept his style even while going big. I think sometimes when riders are going as big as Tim does, there's some tendency sometimes to kind of lose your style. And I, I feel like Tim really held on to that, which is really And impressive. we saw that 630 too. But back to uh, his younger brother, John Seltzer, with the 450 out there. He's just switching up all the way down that top ledge. Clean 450. Yeah, so big from top to bottom from John. So impressive to watch. The brothers. You know that you can just tell that they push each other to the absolute max. So it's a, it's a, 
That was really impressive. I, I was, uh, I'm really pumped. It kind of got me psyched up for the rest of the rest of the competition. We got snowboarders coming up next. Really excited. Same real jam, same format. We're gonna see a lot of good snowboarding. Uh, stick around, guys. We'll be right back. Make winter last year-round at Liberty Mountain Snowflex Center. Enjoy one of our tubing runs or hit the slopes with one of our friendly and knowledgeable instructors. There are features for every level of riding, from beginner to park enthusiasts. There's something here for everyone. Also, don't miss out on our next level ski and snowboard summer camps. Register today. For more information, visit our website at liberty.edu snowflex. Welcome back to Snowflex Games here in Lynchburg, Virginia, here at the Liberty College Grounds. I'm Andy Finch here with Ethan McCree, and we are having a great time. Right, we just saw the ski rail jam finish up, about to move on to the snowboarders. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I think the skiers got the, the party started, so to speak, so uh, I'm really excited. The crowd starting to gather more and more and more on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. A little bit overcast, but I don't mind that sometimes. I had a lot of sun this morning, so I don't mind when the, the clouds head yes, <laughs> head back. Yes, you did, and we're seeing lots of sunscreen flying around. We even got the inner tubes, people hanging out. Yeah. in their seats. Yeah, great, uh, great family atmosphere. A lot of good time, a lot of good people, and it's just uh, we get a lot of watch, a lot of good riding, a lot of good talent here in the East Coast. So, again, I'm remember we are on Snowflex. This is a uh, couple of plastic material with little little needles. You right. Know? Yeah. If you haven't been out here before, I like to kind of. Um, kind of compare it to like a hairbrush almost yep. like a giant hairbrush velcro very very soft but we were talking about it earlier one of the uh one of the uh kind of difficult parts about it sometimes you do have to have your skin covered so even in the the hot summer days i would like to have my skin completely covered because it can be burn a little bit but like we were talking about also earlier it's very very comfortable to fall in so it's a great place to bring out the kids learn to snowboard i know the coaching staff here very personally they're a great group of guys who are very very knowledgeable so if you are thinking about bringing your family up there's a lot to do we have a new tubing facility and great coaching to really help you learn how to ski and snowboard so it's a really really good place uh, to kind of learn. And so right now we are about to drop in the snowboarder, first snowboarder competitor, Mr. Ryan Leeds. He is actually the Liberty University head ski and snowboard coach. So uh, he, I, he not only has to uh, have the pressure of, you know, competing, but he has the pressure of living up to the standards that he's he's kind of uh, instilled in his, his team. Earn so the respect to earn the respect. Exactly. Right, Dropping right. in through that gate, beautiful gate that Snowflakes built today. Dropping in switch. Switch 180. Oh, I think he wanted to come three out of that. Staying on his feet though, keeping his speed on that Gatorade feature there. You can see just looks like he just kind of get his feet under him this this first row. There's a 270 though, going for it, sending it deep onto the jersey box. Kind of just getting his. Uh, I think we might see a little bit of a warm up, getting the warm's leg a little bit. They've been sitting around uh, for a little bit of time here. So just kind of a throwaway run for Ryan right there. I've seen him in warm-ups today, though, so I think we should see a pretty impressive run from Ryan a little later on. So look forward to that. Next up dropping in, we have uh, Vermont local, Sky Gale, come down from Vermont. So we have a lot of good talent from the East Coast up and down. Sky is just a really fun guy to hang around. Always super positive. He throws that front board on the first rail. Tons of speed as he Tails moves for a 450. 450. Yeah, I like how he kind of blunted on as he entered onto that Gatorade feature. And then the no slide pretzel out. Nice, getting after it first run, Sky. Gail getting after it. Yeah, just kind of just bobbling a little bit there at the top feature. 
But that's all right. They got five. Five runs. We're going to take the, the top two combined scores. So it takes the pressure off a little bit, but you don't have too much leniency where you can just kind of throw things around. They want to make sure that they get those top two really solid. Here we go. We got Ben Sulo dropping in. Dropping in. Switch to the first feature. Switch to seven. Coming out back to regular. Nope, still switch. I like that switch from board. That was very, nice. very clean. That was a tricky one to do it on. There's the hard way 270 onto that jersey. Well very done. Nice. You can very hear nice. approval of the crowd. Stoked to see. That was the first real clean run we've seen. Yeah, out of the first three, Ben Sulo. Got to be stoked as he gets to throw away at least two more runs. Bits. So he only needs one more strong one, really. Exactly, yeah. So that's the thing. I think if you see another really solid run from Ben, that's when they can really start to step it up over and over and over, kind of, kind of build on those first couple scores. Isaac Gibson up next. Got to love this guy in his red beard. Yeah, he Call is a leprechaun. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you see, he put down one of his sponsors as Lucky Charms. I'm not sure that's legit, but uh, I think he's kind of playing along with uh, the beard and the red hair. 50-50 front three on that first row. 50-50 nice. back three going uh, the opposite direction. Headed to the double barrel. Nose, pretzel two. Solid there you run go. from Solid Isaac. Solid run from Isaac. Isaac, a little credit to Liberty. They came up with this program a couple years ago called Trails to Rails. I'm sure a lot of you viewing have maybe heard of it. Isaac had never had never snowboarded before, ever. Came up here, learned through the coaching at Trails to Rails, and here he is competing at Dew Games, and he just put down a solid, solid run. So Absolute testament of what's possible here on the Snowflex yeah. without even being on real snow. So if you're a college student looking, you should come check it out. I, I would encourage you to do so. And you can see uh, Isaac put on a good run. Now we have uh, Mr. Nathan Jenkins dropping in. Oh my gosh, switch hard way too. Wow, wow. Definitely the most difficult way you can enter onto a rail. I have not seen someone do that today. That was uh, that was quite impressive. We can definitely expect to see him stick that. He was landing it uh, in practice really clean as he does that backside lip slide on the last double barrel rail. That was a really technical run. I think Judge will score that when he yeah, I clean. think if, be, if he very, gets that, that's 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 the that's a trick right there. I don't know if I've seen one First quite the, the difficulty level of that one right there. So that's as hard as it gets on us from the Nathan Jenkins. So I look forward to his next run. That was our first goofy footer, and here's our second one. Oh, Kevin, come a little like, unstuck on that first rail. Kevin Hoff, actually, he might be regular. Yeah, I think he's regular. I think he was dropping and switching that first feature. Some judges look at is the flow. So he landed uh, switch coming off the pyramid rail. They once you hit the next row, switch. If you come off the switch, you need to hit the next one. Switch. Exactly. You don't want to be reverting in between rails, uh, as that's considered the flow of your run. Something exactly. that's definitely on the criteria, and the, something the judges look at. Yeah, they want to see you keep the technicality. They don't like to see those reverts kind of in the middle where you switch back to the other stands. We got Dan Ager dropping in, Maryland native. Boosting off that first kicker. 2 7 on. Coming up to the pyramid. Nice back three out. Last feature shotgun. Front board. Ah, just washing out a little bit at the bottom. We've kind of got a little breeze picking up here. Uh, that can be a pretty big factor, especially with Snowflex. The way Snowflex work, they actually have a, a system that runs underneath it with water that keeps it wet so you can slick and kind of slide around. When the wind's blowing sometimes, it kind of pushes that water right off. So it can be a little bit sticky at times, and then gusts of winds are kind of hard sometimes. They can push you right off the rails as well. So be on the lookout for that. It's kind of been windy all day, though. I mean, there really wasn't an issue with speed. Uh, Brandon. And Q coming down, coming low and stuck on that first rail. <laughs> the little Sage Kostenberg throwback to the Olympics with the double hand tail slide on the disco floor. There's the pretzel, no slide pretzel out. Notice the duct tape duct on the hiney. <laughs> keeping the keeping the pants nice and dry still. Doesn't want to doesn't want to upgrade the pants. He just wants to keep the same comfortable pants. Just add a little duct tape. Yeah. See, that's kind of a, something that's a little bit common. Uh, again, you're talking about being a comb. If you slide enough on this stuff, it definitely can rip through the clothes. Yeah. But you still wax your board. You still need to keep board tuned up. There's a nice front side, uh, excuse me, lip slide, 270 out, 50-50, 180 off. Oh, uh, just catching that edge between features. That's a tough break from Ryan right there. Just going a little front blunt a little bit. 
All right, it's a, that's a, it's a tough break right there, especially when you're, when you're flowing pretty good and you just kind of catch an edge between features. That's all right. First run, and four more. So we look forward to seeing Ryan again. We've got Mr. Jason Anderson dropping in, Pennsylvania native. Rides uh, Seven Springs Mountain. Makes an appearance at Snowflakes from time to time. Got a nice uh, uh, back three. Did not quite coming around. Almost at like uh, the 2-7. It's a fun trick to do, just a 50-50-3. Um, you don't have to ollie much onto that rail. You can almost go straight on. Mm -hmm. But you can, like I said, you do have that hang time. You can boost off it. So it's fun to throw a little 360 out there, catch some training. A little bit of mixture of jump and rail. Kind of call that a pole jam usually. But right. with the pyramid, it looks a little bit different. Nice little tail slide shifty as he drops in. He said, nah, I don't want to hurt that one. Not this time. Next no, time, maybe. Just totally just kidding. Ryan getting some uh, getting some air off the pyramid. 2-7 on. Getting solid on that last jump. I mean, kind of. Yeah, he kind of tricked us a little bit. He definitely like didn't, wasn't expecting too much <laughs> to throw that solid 270 on. I think we can expect more from uh, yeah, definitely. Ryan in his next run. Just get warmed up. Tyler Lebel. Last rider to drop in the first runs here. Snowboard's really starting off strong. There's a lip slide. So he wanted to spin it around as he got to the end of that. First box, choosing the disc up floor. Backside one, one off. Shaking the head, I think he's just kind of. I kind of wanted more. Yeah, I think he. Uh, he should have though, that, he was clean, you know. Claim it, just get a run in the bank. And it with the front lip, that's all right. Tyler Lebel, seeing you again. Four he, more runs, my man, four more runs. Putting points on the board, nothing to shake your head at, that's for sure. Yeah, sometimes when uh, with snowboarding, it's very easy to, to have it get in your head. And when it gets in your head, you know, and you lose the fun factor, you know, riding can be kind of difficult sometimes. Yeah, there's a huge mental game to the competitive snowboarding side. Ryan lip. leads uh, back at the top, dropping in switch. Uh, switch lip slide. Oh! oh. <laughs> Just okay, so that was a board <laughs> slide. Uh, back flip invert. Definitely not on purpose as he uh, spins out of that backside in the last row. Yeah, let's we'll check this out again. Yes. Look at this as he enters into this. So we're going to go. Jam. Oh, man. He should have just almost just tucked it into a backflip. He was like halfway there a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> you got to be pretty quick yeah, on your feet pretty to, quick on to your pull <laughs> that. Wow, yeah. Again, just really want to stay centered over your feet if you're anytime you're on a rail or a box. It's uh, something to take note of, kids. Sky Gale dropping in. I think the guys just maybe stood around a little bit too long waiting for uh, the skiers to finish up. You know, yeah, I didn't so see this happening in practice. Yeah, maybe a, a little bit of the, the competition pressure with people, you know, eyes all eyes on. That can play a factor. Very clean. From time to time, but yeah, I think it might be just a little bit of the, the getting the, the legs back to loose. And so another uh, another kind of throwaway there for Sky. We haven't seen a clean run from him or Ryan, our top two qualifiers. That was one of the smoothest tricks we've seen on the double barrel. Just Ben Sulo drops in next. Regular footers. He goes for the backside lip slide 270 out on the rail. Board slide. 270. Like I think he just got slipped. He kind of slipped on it too. I wonder. Maybe he got, they put a little soap on, on 180 out. Backside 3 yeah, that was Got the crowd very clapping. Very nice. The crowd is awake after Ben Sulo heads down. So that's actually his second, you know, not the cleanest run. It looked a little bit uncomfortable coming off the pyramid. Uh, but again, solid run top to bottom. No hand drags, no falls. And that's, that's his second. That's He's already second. got yeah, two he got really a, solid scores. No doubt that Ben's sitting on top right now. Yeah, and uh, we haven't seen a lot of clean runs. But uh, Isaac Gibson coming in. He qualified fourth. Headed to the down rail. 2 7 on. Ooh. Just Going big yeah, on that very, back very side. Big. Two seven. Just kind of got a little off balance, a little sideways. Head to the disco, but nice press all the way through it. Tail press. Headed to the shotgun, the double barrel. Front board, 2 7. Very Isaac. nice. Very that nice. Isaac finding the pot of gold at the end of that double <laughs> barrel. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Absolutely. He appreciates it. Can you though. imagine if they had a rainbow <laughs> rail? I imagine he would destroy it. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's awesome. Good. He's a good dude. He is a good man. He is a good man. I've enjoyed getting to know Isaac, that's for sure. Nathan Jenkins, and again, he probably had the, the toughest trick that he was going for. 
Dropping in switch. Switch hard way two. Not, it? Yeah, he's close. He hung he's on really a little close. bit sketchy, but hanging on definitely most difficult. 360 out. Headed to the double barrel. And the back, back side left. And he claimed it. Well, you he can see said, just that's my run. Definitely the most technical, difficult run. Uh, he's just happy to put one in the bag. I know he can do it cleaner. We saw it cleaner in practice. We've been seeing how Barely judges scored. I still stuff. think Ben's run uh, with the cleanness that he had. Uh, but if he does land that, Nathan lands that real clean, it's going to be a hard run to beat. Yeah, very, very, very technical. Ooh, nice proper uh, back lip from Mr. Kevin Hoff. Very big 360. Got a little bit squirrely, a little bit out of control coming off the pyramid. Just sitting back a little bit. Got a front blunt. 2 7 out. I think we expect to see a clean run from him. That was a really. Nice smooth run the making, just coming along stuck on that middle feature. Yeah, I think we're kind of seeing a preview of really what a lot of these guys can do, you know, through a couple of features. You know, we haven't seen too many clean runs top to bottom, but we're seeing a lot of difficult, a lot of big tricks on some features. And I think it's just about stringing together, getting the flow. And we're going to see some really, really good runs. But now we got Daniel Ager just kind of washing out on the 2 7. Again, another one of those riders that can really throw down a winning run just kind of at the, the snap of a finger, but we're taking the top two. So they gotta at least get two solid runs in the bag. And right now we've seen two solid from Ben Sua, but not too many others are really putting down, you know, clean runs top to bottom. We saw Nathan just finish one with the top to bottom, but we know he can clean that up. We've seen him do, you know, that run hundreds of times, very, very solid today. So we're just looking for, for guys top to bottom cleanness. Brandon and Q up next. There's the lip slide, 270 out. Pretty clean, make off a hair early, but there's the front three. Uh, we've seen it happen a couple times where guys land a little heavy on the edge. That's the one thing about the Snowflex. You do want to land as flat base as possible. Not saying you can't land on an edge as he right. finishes with the, the front board, or excuse me. Yeah, front uh, board. Yeah, front board. Uh, but yeah, you definitely want to land as flat base as possible. If you get too heavy on an edge, it can slip out. That, yeah, that's it, one difference. It's a lot like soft ice, so to speak. You know, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't kind of happen. I'm from the West Coast, dude. You, right. You're not speaking my lingo. Soft ice. <laughs> soft ice. It's like <laughs> the, the edging of ice, you know? So you can't hold a quick ice to go, or edge because it'll just kind of wash you out, but it doesn't hurt. So it's soft. Soft ice. I'm going to go with whatever you say, man. Looks right. fine. <laughs> 270 out, start things off. 50 50 over the, the pyramid rail. Looking for the Jersey Shore front board coming out switch. Uh, just slipping out as he dumps the speed, but still, hey, that run, I'd claim that. That was a good run. Definitely happy to stick one. Here we go, Jason Anderson dropping back in. Jason Anderson is coming off a broken hand injury. Just recovered. So he's like happy. fully recovered? Yeah, I'm fully recovered. He didn't have anything really done to it. He was telling me about it, but um, not what the typical one week out. I'm good. Yeah, typical snowboarder answer. You know, <laughs> he's like, oh yeah, I wrapped it up with uh, some bandages, and now I'm fine. And duct tape. Yeah, little, now I'm done. Little duct tape and super glue. We're good. <laughs> they told Jason this shows his dedication and just his love for snowboarding. They told him, hey, we can get surgery, but your your snowboarding season's gonna come to an end. You know, and uh, he uh, he opted out, and so he's riding with kind of a messed up hand, but all for the love of snowboard. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm not sure, <laughs> but uh, here we go. Brian dropping in. Has a lot of fun on his board. You can always tell he's having a great time. Got a front board, very proper front board, right through that, clean all the way through. 50-50 method, kind of going old school, but you I gotta can love this style. You, you like always got to appreciate that. Two seven. Ah, I'm just holding the edge, just kind of washing out. But I like that. I appreciate that. You can tell, you know, it's all about having fun at the end of it. You know, you're snowboarding down a mountain. It's pretty awesome that we're doing this, and that we're doing it for uh, a pretty good cash prize. You know, Snowflex and Liberty's 18 G's. 18,000 dollars. for first, 1,200 for second, 800 for third. And these college students are just shroupers. <laughs> stoked to get a little hand on some coin. Tyler Lee will drop it in. Came off a little bit on this feature last time. Switch up, nice and clean that time from Tyler. Headed Very back smooth. over to the uh, little dance box. 2-7 on, coming back out to red. <laughs> Not happy with that, we saw him shake his head last time. I think he maybe he just shakes his head. Maybe, maybe he just. Yeah, it could be, maybe he wants 450 uh, on it. 
Actually, 540 total, you know? Yeah. Start to finish. Start to finish. Spin to win is what we call it. <laughs> I really liked how locked, he, locked on he was on that first uh, box feature up top. Yeah, it, it came off very, very smooth. It's barely a box. It's very skinny. It's more of a ledge. So here comes Tyler. We're going to kind of take a quick replay of the final feature. Just came off a little bit early and kind of on his toe edge, kind of landing heavy on his toe edge. And again, it's very hard to grip when you're coming that heavy down, so just kind of washed out to his uh, Back to, to the top there. of the bid order. Ryan Leeds dropping in. Switch. There's oh, the hard way to Sev. I like that. Going front side on them to check out the size of that wow. front three. That was so Off far the down. Rail. Two seven. Two seven. Wow, really, very, really clean. Very solid run from Ryan Leeds. Did, did you notice every single one of his landings was just, yep, I landed that. Yep, I landed. I mean, we've seen some difficult washouts and trying to hold the edge, but Ryan had. It's like warm butter, very no smooth. Problem. Yeah, very, Get out very the butter smooth. knife. And that was uh, that was Ryan Leeds' last run, so just kind of throwing it down, sticking it. Um, and so uh, we'll see. So we're going to do a uh, top four, four runs for, for the top snowboard. two runs of top four. Top two uh, runs of four. So I get to throw out half the runs. That's still a really good format. Just for time purposes, I think we changed up the format a little bit. I know we mentioned five runs earlier, but we are sticking with four runs. Best two count. It is a combined score of those two best runs. All right, Sky Gale. Getting around. There's a nice board slide going out. for the 450 out. <laughs> Sat down. Always got a smile on his face. You I know? know. He's such a fun guy to hang out with. He'll, you know what I like about him? You can say something stupid and he'll still laugh. Like, he's he's into it. Yeah, know? and he's one of those he's one of those people you love having around because no matter what you say, he laughs or you feel like a, the funny guy. You know, in any group of Sky, you're the funny guy because yeah, anything he finds is really yeah, funny. Yeah, you're like, you kind of feel good about it. It's like... I didn't know I was such a funny guy. But then at the, the end of the day, you know, just good people. Good yeah, person. Scott. Absolutely. A lot He's of been Vermonters, charged. I mean, uh, there's a Ben Sewell, another Vermonter. A lot of good people come out of Vermont, Ben changed it up with that nice nose press back one out. There's the four side two set out. There's the back. Oh. Or excuse me, front board coming low and stuck as he, you could hear his tail catch the end of that rail. But Ben, we already know he got two solid runs under his belt right out of the gate. His uh, hit his uh, friend Sky gave him a little little lip, a little grief after he kind of took a hard fall <laughs> there. <laughs> there, yeah, you could see him as he did that that front board. He caught his nose as he swung it up. Oh, Isaac the leprechaun Gibson. going <laughs> the big. The leprechaun, the luck of the leprechaun. Let's see if he can pull it off. 50-50 on three. Going Hopefully edge. his pot of gold will be up on the podium tonight. We'll be doing our award ceremony a little bit later. There's the front board clean 270 Yeah, very out. clean. Very, very clean from Isaac. He's got that trick on lock. His, the bottom feature was really, really solid for him. He kind of had some struggles up at the pyramid. But we did. We saw a couple good runs from, you know, from all the riders. Oh, that's so. the next run. Here comes Isaac down again to the last feature. Going in front, you know, front blunt, really. 2-7 out. You can see he had that rail nice and centered on his board. As you might say, locked on. Nathan Jenkins dropping in. Got a very, very technical 180, 360 off. Headed in. Front board, just sitting down back on it. So I think of this strategy for Nathan, he actually had the, the run last time that we really thought was very, very technical, a great run. So I think he was really looking for that second run that he could really put down clean. So and maybe he changed it up. He yeah, did a completely exactly. different run that time. Exactly. So he was really looking for something that he could really, really put down. You so. know, I think he probably wanted that one a little bit. Uh, his last run that was so technical, he, he landed it. I think he could have done it cleaner, but you know, he's all maybe I'll just give the judges something different to look at instead of right. sticking that one cleaner. So smart tactical move by Nathan. And here we go. Mr. Kevin Hoff, 2-7 on, big 2-7 on, man. Almost clearing that entire rail. 50-50, 180 out. Coming into the jersey. Switch lip to uh, pretzel out. That was kind of technical. Yeah, it was. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. Kevin doesn't seem like he's the, the happiest camper in the world, but I'm not sure why, because that was a pretty technical I trick. think that rail, ups, I think he wanted back three, possibly off that. Uh, actually, no, I think because he came in switch. I'm pretty sure he did want the back one. Yeah. So I thought that was a pretty good run from Kevin. Had it back up. I mean, if you want to be nitpicky, maybe he could have cleaned up a little, but he stuck everything, made the end of the rails. Dan Ager dropping in. 
Lots of speed on backside 270. Yeah. That could be tough, rain. you know. You, right as you spin off, the back one out. Oh, hooking his heel edge a little bit on the landing. But that back 270 can be tough because it's pretty blind as you come around the land on the rail. Yeah, no, definitely. That's probably one of the scariest ones is when you don't see the rail until the very, very last second. So that can be very, very challenging. Yeah, when you saw Nathan doing it the hard way. The actually hardest come off way. Yeah. Heel edge spinning backside. I'm kind of a chicken now. Now that I've kind of gotten out of snowboarding here for a little bit, had some back issues, and now I'm looking at these things like, hey, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm sitting here with you today, I guess. Injuries have a way of doing that. <laughs> Just keep going. on from Brandon. Hang on there. You can see him making sure he stays on his feet. Uh, I think trying to go another 2-7. And we've seen a lot of people getting hung up on the pyramid just because it is, you know, it does have a pretty steep pitch. Um, so it's a little bit of a challenging feature. We've seen a lot of really good tricks today go down on it. So we know the capabilities that people have on there. It's just kind of, you know, right now, having a, hanging people up a little bit. Hey, if Brandon would have stuck, that would have been pretty creative as he, as he was board sliding. And he actually kind of nose blunts with the side of the pyramid box. That'd be a, a creative maneuver. That's one thing about those pyramids. You can approach them from different angles. Whoa. Ryan Bosman. Looked like he wanted to give the fans a little high five. <laughs> there you go. There's the 180 tail press. Very relaxed. Yeah, he does kind of have a lazy style. He does. I like that. Going yeah, like too. front blunt. There you go, Ryan. Very good relaxed, job, Ryan. top to bottom. Just, just cruising. Yeah, having a good time. Like us, we're all having a good time here. It is the second annual Snowflex game. It was originally called the Dew Game, so I guess it's like the fifth. Fifth, but we're all having a good time. Great weather, great friends. No. Here goes Jason. Jason's also having a great time, just having a lot of fun. And that's what it's all about. I'm having a lot of fun. Andy's here having a lot of fun. Having a great time. Yeah, man. Jason pressing the, the down barrel. I like how he locked on to those. It can be easy to come off early sometimes. Nice, nice grab. Night, nose Back grab. one hitty off. Yeah, very creative. 50 50 on. Coming in switch. There's the switch. Board slide. Back to regular. Jason Anderson. I've enjoyed getting to know this guy as well. Very good kid. You know. Really loves riding. He was actually uh, out at a couple really good events over in uh, Seven Springs. They have a really good park up there in Pennsylvania. Home mountain, place he calls home. Impressive thing is a lot of these kids got their start right here on the Snowflex. Yeah, we have a good group of people. We uh, saw the girls earlier today. Uh, we had probably like three or four that actually learned on Snowflex. Ryan Charm up next as he comes in. Switch for this first feature. Two, actually just 180, which can be difficult to land 50-50. Uh, 180 out. There's our board slide. Still, still switch. Do his whole run switch. Oh, he's gonna revert it back to normal here. Goofy footer 270, front 270. Yeah, sticking a run. Yeah, pretty clean. We just saw the little revert right there, but I mean, clean run, top to bottom. Is that us? I don't think it's us. <laughs> Sorry, folks. A little bit of a technical difficulties with a <laughs> lot of sound, so. There you go. Hey, we like to party here. Yeah. Just getting loud. Things get crazy up at the Snowflake Center sometimes. You see people grabbing their hearts. I think we just made them skip a beat. Yeah, everybody's running around, closing their ears. That's Wait. right. Hey, things happen. Things Tyler Lee, our last rider to drop, fourth and final run. Let's see what he's got for us. We can get five guys are kind of lined up there. Yeah, like they're going to take another one. I'm not quite sure. I guess we'll be surprised again. Tyler Lee will drop it, and we saw a really great switch up from him on this feature last time. Not quite getting it as smooth this time. Tyler's the the head shaker. He's uh, I guess he's the perfectionist, you know. He Ooh, hitting like a little bit of a ledge that, yeah, like side that. approach. Two seven out. Tyler's really one of the only ones hitting the uh, the kind of the disco box. No head shake. Yeah, no head shake. I think he was happy with that. Yeah, run. front lip there at the end, pretty clean. They go, Mr. Tyler. Another one of the Snowflex kind of learned on Snowflex. Which we there's a couple pros out there. Jamie Nichols and Cedric Smith. Those guys are on the pro circuit, and they were raised up on Snowflex. Yeah, I think one we're gonna in see England and one in uh, Denmark somewhere. Yeah, I think we're gonna see a lot more. Really, I really do. And Jamie Nichols, you know, born and raised on it, and and he made it uh, all the way to the Olympics this year. So that was that was and really had a neat great showing. Yeah. I mean, he almost. I can't remember if he hit the podium or not. He was really, I think he, he just missed the podium. it. I think it was fifth. Yeah, he was close, Two spots man. Out. It was so we are going to call this fifth. I'm not quite sure if it's going to be counted or not. I mean, but who who knows? But they here goes Ryan it. Leeds for the potential last run. Going 2-7 on to the single barrel. Coming over to the pyramid. Lip slide, 2-7. Getting a little bit of uh, out of control there. 
blunt 2-7. Very, very clean there to there stomp out at the bottom. That was a stomped run. Yeah, stomped run, top to bottom. Coming in clutch. I mean, we saw a lot of people falling in the first couple of runs, but now we're seeing kind of get their groove on, got to get their legs back underneath them, seeing a lot of good runs, a lot of technical runs that I can't do, that I can just talk about. So it's always, Hey, but you can talk about them. That's hey, the I can talk thing. about them, exactly. So we're going to have Sky Gale dropping back in. Good old happy Sky Gale. He might be uh, waiting for the win. Come on, let's see Sky stick one here. I, yeah. I think he's yet to have this assault run all the way through. Uh, he's shown he's got some technical maneuvers. Got the wind kicking for Sky. There's the front board. Come off a little hairily, but still. Look at the speed. Whoa, he didn't even go up top. He did that tail. I what tail if that was slide? on purpose? I that don't was know. Mean. Is there any I way mean. we can pull a replay of that second feature? That gave, that was awesome. It was like a tail 2-7 off the side of the wall. I yeah, don't... it was a tail slide on the, the pyramid, yeah. not on the rail. That's if that was on purpose, that's extremely technical. <laughs> I wouldn't even think to go for that. <laughs> there you hey, go. But even, if, but even if it was on accident, he still pulled it. Here so. you go. Look at this right here. Uh, well, he came, he came off, off early, early, but he okay. stuck it all the way through. That was really was impressive from Sky. Yeah, Sky. <laughs> look at him. Happy just, just bouncing around. <laughs> ben Sulo. Again, Ben's been killing it from, from every run, pretty much. Front board kind of hesitating there. Going switch out, switch. Hesitating in a good way, kind yeah, of stalling. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. A little style to it. Then switch, tail press. Switch I still 18, think tail his press. first two runs might have been the strongest and I think could put him on the podium. Yeah. Ten, uh, he's over here yelling to the crowd. 33. It's a good number. It's an old line these days. There he goes, kicking over uh, to the left. That good showing from Ben today. A good five runs from Ben. I was, I was really, really impressed with him. I know you've uh, been having some fun with Mr. Leprechaun Isaac Gibson here dropping in. Look at the back. Two, yeah. Locked on. Best we've seen Isaac do that backside 270 on the rail up top. There's the front three. Hang on, bud. Come a little unstuck on that landing. He sent it pretty big as he did that 360 off. And there's the backside tail slide. Actually, excuse me, front tail slide 270 out. Isaac Gibson, again, he's a, he's been another one of those, I think, kind of middle of the road, even closer to the upper middle. He's put down solid runs. Not the, not the cleanest that you see him coming off the three right here. Really working to get it around. We got the hand touch. The judges are definitely going to note that. But, I mean, we've seen runs for him where he's not, he's still got the flow. You know, he's not giving up. He's still hitting every feature and, and throwing down a lot of solid tricks. See what Nathan's got for us this run. See if he does that same switch hard way. Nope. There's the... Front lip slide coming a little unstuck. The guy's got tech tricks. There's yeah, no he's got a bag. He's definitely got a bag of tricks for sure. You know, and it's interesting. He had some really strong practice runs as he does that 270 on at the bottom. Uh, sometimes that happens. You get into a competition and just the, the mind game coming into it. Yeah. So the competitors are really strong riders, just have fun with their friends, and others turn it on like riders like Sean White turn it on in competition, actually feed off the pressure. Right, yeah, you see that a lot. And again, we were kind of hanging out and watching everybody today, and we saw a lot, a lot of solid runs coming down. Like Mr. Kevin Hoff, he throws down all day, every day. It's uh, one of actually snowboarders here for Liberty University. Did very, very well out at Nationals this year. Back three out of the, the pyramid. 2-7 on, 2-7 off. Just reverting a little bit there at the end, but that was like probably the best I think we've seen from Kevin today as well really top to bottom. So I think everybody's kind of feels the pressure of, you know, competition coming to end. You got to get that run. You got to get the top two runs that the judges are taking. And we saw that from Kevin not quite getting around the 360 there on the replay. The nice that was kind of the nose blunt. Yeah. From the lift approach. Daniel Ager, another one of those riders, I think has so much potential to throw down one of the podium runs, but just hasn't been able to really stick something so far, that was really clean, locked in, top to bottom of that rail. Hard way front 2-7, and then there's the 50 front 180 out. Come and switch, hang on, there we see, you can just get a little, he's still got speed, you got it. There it is, nice slow approach. Yeah, Popped stuck it, 50. claim that, Dan, I think of that. Yeah, once you get a little too far in edge, you can find yourself in a hard spot. Daniel Ager, see, uh, got a replay from Daniel coming in. Just yep. holding on and just could not quite just hold that edge. Pop on 50-50. <laughs> Got Brandon McHugh coming in. Brandon, another one of the Liberty team riders. 2-7. Pretty clean. Pretty clean 2-7 from Brandon right there. Dropping in uh, 
Port side 2 7. Pyramid headed to the jersey. Flip side 2 7. Just not being able to kind of hold it out. Really, you know, standard rut, I feel like, from Brand. I've seen a lot of technical tricks from him as well. I think he was really just trying to get a, a top to bottom score. We kind of haven't seen one from Brand yet, so I think he was just trying to get a completed score, you know, for the judges to take a look at. I feel like kids can learn so quick sometimes their their skills on the rails go past their actual riding abilities because they can learn so quick here. I mean, you see how many features are on this mountain with that lip slide 270 out. Brian Bosman, 50 50, 180 out. And then switch to the flat box. Switch to seven. And again, he's uh, he's got the. He's got the style of, you know, just having fun. You know, I'm just cruising around with my friends. Looks very relaxed, never looks tense or anything like that. So good to have Ryan out here today. Not sure if you guys can hear the excitement going behind us. We know we got some sponsor swag getting thrown out. Sponsors like Pepsi, Snowboard Mag, New Schooler Mag, Smith, Optics, Dragon K2. And then the board slide 270 out. Is this Jason? Jason yeah, Jason Anderson. Head to the pyramid. I think you wanted a three there. Got the 180. A little wave to the fans. How you doing? Here I am, still in the middle of my run. Switch 180. Coming back out to rag. Jason Anderson. Something so impressive with this mountain is, again, this is part of the Liberty College. Any students get to ride this mountain for free. For free. For yeah, free. You get you get free. coaching and learning. You don't just kind of get thrown out here on the mountain. You can come up here and say, hey, I want to learn. For 30 free dollars? For free dollars. 30 free. 30 free. 30 free dollars. That's awesome. Yeah, it's such a such a great thing that Liberty had kind of put in place here. A lot of fun. It's a big perk. Yeah, it's a it's a great community up here as well. There's a, if you want a place where you can hang out with a great group of people, make a lot of really great friends, this is the place I would recommend. This is where I spent most of my time when I was here in college for sure. Ryan Dean Charm getting tech up top with the Switch 270. 270 off coming a little unstuck. Here's the backside. 183 off. Coming in switch for his final rail. He's going to go for the double barrel option. There's front lip. 189 of that. Awesome, awesome runs coming down. We got one more rider to drop. I do see the riders back up yeah, there. Yeah, I do see the riders back up there as well. I know that'd be the fifth. I think we were talking fourth. And then I think we did the fifth, so I'm not quite sure. We're struggling to count the yeah. numbers rotation. Runs. <laughs> There's a lot of numbers. Leave There's that, a lot of counting. Leave that up to the judges. I was never very good at math, you know, so I'm just I'm just talking. Tyler Lee will drop it in. Once that switch up, coming off a little bit early, coming over to just the, the disco box, spinning, nice little hesitation, little style at it from Tyler. Call Tyler. out a shifty. Yeah, a little shifty on the box. And I don't know if you guys noticed up top, you could really see how much you're able to, to traverse across the snowflex. I mean, went from the far skier's right feature to the skier's left disco floor. This has been an awesome, awesome day already. We still have big air to come up. We just finished the rail jam, skiers and snowboarders. Again, Snowflex Games, Mandy Finch here with Ethan McCree. Thank you very much.
right back here, Snowflex Games here in Lynchburg, Virginia. We're gonna check out there. You can see the list of riders that we had. There's some the scores, yeah, some scores that way actually that as they stand so far, we have Ryan Leadson at 151, Ben Sulo 150, Kevin Hoff 132, and we actually will have one more run after this, we were actually given word. So let's actually kind of, t in, a, in, a, in a look back of review, let's look at Nathan Jenkins really quick. We saw really, really technical things from him. That was probably the cleanest he threw it down, but that's the most technical trick. And again, right there, very, very technical, spin on, spin off, not putting his hands down. He could clean it up definitely a little bit, but we're seeing a lot of, lot of different tricks from, from Nathan, top to bottom, mixing it up. Just again, to his credit, I think he's just over a little bit in the contest. Uh, in practice, I didn't see him flailing quite as much. But again, those are such difficult tricks. Yeah, and then we got Sky Gale. Again, we were looking for Sky to really throw down. Like you had mentioned, Sky was actually putting down some of the cleanest tricks we saw. It was just hard for Sky, kind of with the snowflakes, I think adjusting to it, not used to riding it, to really string top to bottom. Yeah, he never quite lined up a whole run. I think he had really solid features exactly. uh, throughout the event, or throughout his contest, but. Someone who did have solid runs top to bottom. We saw multiple from this guy, Mr. Ben Sulo. Really, really technical again, um, top to bottom. He was very, very clean. You see uh, back tail 27 coming up to the pyramid with a board side 270. A little bit scroll. You can clean that up a little bit. Um, we've seen that feature kind of stick a lot of lot of riders where they're having a good run, and that kind of just throws them for a loop there a little bit. So some guys to keep an eye on for this last final run. You know, you got Ryan Leeds. Sky Gell, Ben Sulo, Nathan, uh, solid, solid riding. Nathan Jenkins, I mean, uh, Kevin Hoff here, I think he was sitting in fourth as it stands right now. 2-7 on, kind of uh, kind of one of those riders that really can just pull a trick that you just, you don't even know he has, and all of a sudden he throws it down in the, ra uh, in the run. And here you go, Ryan Lee is sitting at the top of the podium so far, just with one more run to go, like we mentioned. There's that highway 2 set. that was really nice. There's the 50-50 front three out. Just something that we're noticing difference with Ryan is just how clean he is. Yeah, that last week that we just watched probably as clean as it as clean as it gets. So here we go, about to drop in the final run, and we're gonna start off with our leader, Mr. Ryan Lead. So he here we really gets to put the pressure on by dropping first uh, as he's sitting on top of the leaderboard. There's uh, still a little bit of pressure on Ryan as well as he's sitting in first, but just by one point to Mr. Sula. Yeah, he doesn't get to take a victory lap, that's Not for sure. All. Not at all. Dropping in switch. We're gonna see something from Ryan here. Switch 180 coming off early. That's not going to do it. That's, that's not going to better yeah, score. It's all, it's, that's, uh, he's going to sit at the 150. He knows it. Just getting a little extra style at it there. A little extra pop, too. Really boosting off the end of that rail. And there's the lip slide, lip tail slide to 270 out. So Ryan, he's going to have to sit on the hot seat. Yeah, he's sitting. I'm not sure if they know the score, but we know. So uh, we know. Oh, we know. Here he goes, coming from the pyramid. Where'd he'd already fallen, so just, you know, big. Shifty poke right there. So. mute grab. I love the style. Having fun with it. See the misters going, keeping this snowflake nice and slick. All right. Sky Gale. Front tail slide 270 out. Sky really looking to put a solid run down. Clean. Tail slide 270 out. Run side. Come on, there it is. No slide pretzel. That's probably one of the cleanest. Yeah, I think before. he did one as we thought as his last run last time. I think he simplified clean. it a little bit. Yeah, we saw him. I think we was trying for the 450 on the pyramid. I think is what he wanted, you know, in a perfect world. But he realized he was having a little bit of a hard time, so he took the strategic route. And so we f saw for the pyramid, instead of going 450 here, he's going to go uh, board side. Well, kind of that's down to the shotgun, but uh, just board side, 2-7 out. So here we go, Ben Sulo dropping in. Started out really strong as he switched things up on the rail. There's the board slide. A little fakey. tap. Yeah, a little tap the fakey there. All right, coming to switch for the last hit. Right, 180, 180 off. He does a 50. See, but we already had two really good runs from Ben, I feel like. I don't know if that's going to be up caliber to where he was to add to his score. I'm not sure. I mean, We're talking one point away. We're talking one point. You know, things can change on the last final run. Just he has, has to up a score by one. So. And judges can get a little bit of excitement kind of built up in the last run. Like, this guy's got the pressure on, and he's answering to that pressure is Isaac. Mr. Lepcon drops in big 270. Two uh, trying to go 2-7 out. He's got those two sevens on lock on that feature. Very, very smooth. 180 tail press. 
nice and straight, coming into the flash rail, dumping his speed, setting up for the pot of gold, front forward, two, two seven. out, nice and clean. Nicely oh. done, nicely done. He uh, start. I think he only had one run to where he was just kind of all over the place, and then from then on out, he just kind of dialed in. We saw a lot of solid tricks. Not the most smooth, top to bottom. I mean, he never threw down something that was like, wow, that was really, really clean from top to bottom. But he had a lot of features where he had a lot of technical tricks, a lot of style. I enjoy watching him ride. He's, he's one of the guys I really enjoy when he's, when he's on a snowboard. Isaac definitely hoping to get his hands all over that gold coin. 18,000 up for grabs today. But Nathan up next, Nathan Jenkins. Check it out. Most technical ride now here. Can he pull it off cleanly? Hard way to, oh, hard way. Uh, lip, yeah. ball just lip, excuse me, back lip. And then 270 out of the board slide. And coming in, switch from board. Oh no, you can see him frustrated as he did a different run, giving the judge something different to look at. I, I do appreciate that. I know we saw three different runs from Nathan. Unfortunately, that one's not going to be a score that he's going to keep. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things you just kind of have to go for it. I mean, he wasn't sitting quite up at the top of the podium, oh so to throw in the switch front board, it's risky, but it's something he had to take. He knows he had to take, and he was so close, really. He was so close, just landing heavy on his toe edge. I think that's where the frustration came in, is just, you know, he knew he was so close to getting it. Mr. Kevin Hoff, I think we saw him sitting in uh, fourth place. Got almost out of control, but actually pulled it out there in the pyramid. 360, whoa! We saw that from a couple of people. I think Ryan started with the almost backflip earlier, and Kevin didn't want to be uh, didn't want to be outdone. Possibly <laughs> drinking a little bit too much Pepsi product up at the top. A little <laughs> over amped. A little, a little bit of a sugar rush as he flies off that that pyramid rail. Daniel Ager up next. Yeah, so Kevin's not gonna in. Kevin's not gonna up his score any from that one. Got a regular footer coming in. Yeah. So he's gonna go back. Or excuse me, front board, 270 out. Staying normal for him as he's a regular footer. 250 back, 180 out. Revert in the middle. Change it up as he goes for the back, back lift. Lap. Very clean. I love a good back lift. Yeah. When they're clean, it's one of my favorite tricks to look you know, at. If you so. weren't, you know, if you weren't a snowboarder, you may not appreciate a little back lift. But uh, here, Snowflex Games, we appreciate it very much. And having a little bit of fun with the camera. Dan and those guys always having a good time. Always a big smile on his face. I like that. Brandon McHugh up next. Dropping in. Goofy footer. Front two sub. Come off a hair early, but staying clean. There's the board slide. Front two sub. And for the last no slide pretzel out. Yeah, that was clean from Brandon again. Oh, well, that's a great. I think he could better his score actually with that run. No more time. Another one of those riders, he just making it look so easy. I mean, it's hard sometimes, especially for you viewers out there who aren't really used to watching snowboarding or involved too much in snowboarding. A lot of these guys are making these tricks look extremely easy, and we just saw Brandon make those tricks look extremely comfortable. But that's that's some that's some difficult things that they're doing on these snowboards that they're making look easy. So it's sometimes I guess hard to appreciate it, but it's a uh, it's a it's a talent that's few and far between, I guess, to make it look that easy. Ryan Bozeman, nose slide, 270 out. Here we go 50-50, back 180. Coming in switch for this final jersey box. Switch front board. Coming back to normal. So, uh, yeah, good run, Ryan Bozeman. Yeah, we've seen a lot of just uh, comfortable tricks from him as well. Kind of the same thing I was talking about, Brandon. Sometimes he just makes it look so easy just because he is so relaxed, so comfortable. Lazy on style. Lazy style. That's a good thing, folks. Yeah, it's a very good thing. I mean, I, again, that's one of the things that I think is like uh, forgotten. Like uh, Mr. Jason starting off with a nice little tripod there, having <laughs> a lot of fun, a little layback on the snowflakes. I don't know how comfortable that is for his arms, but. You know, I can appreciate a nice lay back on this notebook. Uh, tail press to switch up board side. 50-50. Back three out. Head to the jersey. Nice little nose side switch up uh, board side. Tail slap. Just tapping the, tapping the end of that jersey barrier. Tap, so. tap, tap, Roo. <laughs> tapping in. Shout out no names. Back All right, we got to think a couple more riders. You go look at the replay. Just a nice little tail press, switch up board slide, coming into the pyramid. Just saw a nice back three out. That's a clean back three. So a lot of yeah, we've seen a lot of attempts at that. I think Jason put down one of the cleaner ones that we've seen. Ryan, 
or excuse me, Brian in the front 180. Again, that's one of the hardest ones to land and just stay on the rally. You see him coming off a little bit early. There's a switch 50-50, back three, coming a little stuck on the landing. But one for the crowd, folks, as he does a board side. switch board slide. The switch? Switch, switch board, board slide? Yeah, two seven out. Oh, excuse me. No, he is goofy foot. That was normal. Still impressive. I was impressed. I'm impressed. Everybody out there? Shoot, man. Last rider drop, fifth final run. Tyler Lee will regular footer here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Sun is out. The misters are flying. There's front lip. Tyler's gun's out right there. Spinning around down the ledge. He likes that disco floor. He does. Backside three all the way through. He's got a smile on his face this time. No head chicken <laughs> from Tyler. No head chicken from Tyler. He's, a, he's pumped right now. And I'm pumped for him. There you go. I like that. The lip 180. Yeah, Tyler Lee. Well, there you go. There you go. those ones. I think he likes 50 50. So that was, a, that was an impressive last run. I don't know if we're going to see a lot of change in the leaderboard, though. We were looking at the leaderboard. I think we saw uh, Ryan Leaves there sitting in the front, Ben Sulo. Uh, ben Sulo threw down another clean run, very, very comfortable. He was only a point separated from Ryan Leeds, who was sitting in first as of that last run. And so it's with the one point difference, it's, you know, if he just ups one of his scores by one point, there we go, we have a tie right there. So I don't know. I, I, it's a, I'm glad I'm not a judge. I've said that before. I'm glad I'm sitting here with you, Andy, and I don't have to really put numbers on it. But. Uh, <laughs> But we got Jonathan Kirk. He's got a couple guests hosting over there. What do you got for us, Jonathan? Thanks, guys. I'm here with Brent Washburn and Drew Sherwood. They're managers here at uh, Snowflex. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the Snowflex Center here. Uh, it's the only one of its kind in North America. How did it end up in Lynchburg, Virginia, at Liberty University? Uh, I know uh, a long time ago the school looked at the option uh, with Jerry Falwell Sr. Uh, they wanted to look into skiing and snowboarding as an option. Uh, one of our vice presidents, Lee Beaumont, actually uh, visited numerous facilities and brought the idea of Snowflex into play for Liberty. And uh, ever since then, 2009, five years, it's, it's been here. It's been incredible. What sort of ministry opportunities has Snowflex provided Liberty University that it, it wouldn't have had otherwise? kind of atmosphere. They want to be on Liberty's campus outside of the action sports industry. So we're able, it's, it's just a huge opportunity for us to minister to people who would never otherwise come to Liberty University. Well, obviously we have competitions here, yeah. but are there any other times when professionals come here to train, maybe in the off season when there's no snow elsewhere? Yeah, we, we've had uh, a couple professionals come through here, uh, especially during the summertime. A lot of athletes, they have to pay to go overseas, Chile, New Zealand. So this allows them to keep their expenses down, stay in the States, continue practicing. Uh, you'll see more of your park guys here, not so much uh, your downhill racers, but uh, it's a perfect place, repetition. They get a lot of runs in in a short time, and uh, they progress really fast. And actually with our camps, we're able to bring in a lot of guest pros that are able to help train the, the kids that come here from all over the East Coast to uh, train during the summer. Now when you talk about training, uh, especially for beginners, I know uh, the guys over there mentioned before that wiping out on ice can be a little bit more painful. Not that it's ever happened to me, of course, but uh, is this a good place for beginners? Someone who's, who's never skied or snowboarded before, is this a good place to learn? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great place to learn. I uh, used to be the director of the ski school here, and we were able to train beginners with an outrageous pace compared to other facilities. You're able to get way more laps in. The surface is very forgiving compared to ice, like we have a lot of here on the East Coast. So underneath the Snowflex itself, we have two and a half inches of foam, and that gives you a good bit of cushion when you fall. Well, thanks, guys. And uh, after this, we'll have more action from Snowflex after these messages.
Liberty has grown with intention, purpose, and boldness. And sometimes it can be hard to keep up with all the change. But by liking Liberty's Facebook page and following Liberty on Twitter, you can get instant access to exclusive content and keep up to date with all the latest current events. Go online to see all the different ways you can stay connected to Liberty University. Welcome back to the 2014 Snowflex Games. Now, you've heard him uh, commentate on the snowboarding action and the skiing action here, but now we're going to take a chance to get to know Andy Finch a little bit better with this video. Hey guys, just wanted to share real quick what it looks like to have your faith in Christ and, and the freedom that's in it. You know, we were sent here to just have a perfect lifestyle, no sickness, no sin, nothing, and uh, the devil intervened. And we, we broke, we picked from that tree, and now we are sin. We're, we're dead in our sins. And whether you feel like you're a good person or not, without Christ, uh, our, our ending is death. And what that looks like to have a relationship with Christ is, is to just believe that Jesus came as the Son of God. He lived a perfect life, no sin at all, which is pretty hard to comprehend. But uh, he was the son of God, God in, in form. He had the Holy Spirit in him. And he went around preaching for 33 years. And there were so many prophecies that he was going to be on this planet or on this earth and, and sharing God's word that he was the son of God. But no one believed him because he came as a humble servant instead of some big rich king. And he fulfilled every prophecy that there was to humble his life and die on the cross, take on the sin of the world, and raise three days later. And through that, he was the ultimate lamb. You know, it talks about in the Old Testament how, you know, you had to make sacrifices for your, your sins. You had to confess your sins. Well, through uh, Jesus' blood on the cross, it's a free gift. It's accepting in your heart and professing with your mouth that Jesus and God is king, the only living true God, and that uh, that's... You're just confessing your sin to Christ. It's true freedom. So if you guys want to know more about that, make sure you email us at info at thisismystory.com and we'll uh, get you hooked up with Christ and, and you can find true freedom. We are the dreamers, the game changers, the freedom fighters, and the melody makers. We are a university that doesn't just graduate scholars. Any college can do that. We train champions from all fields of study and all walks of life to be influencers on a global scale and make a difference for God. So here's your invitation. Here's your invitation. Your invitation to the largest Christian university in the world. Welcome back, guys. You just heard from Mr. Andy Finch, my partner in crime, sitting over here with the booth for me today. It's always very encouraging, you know. You call me a criminal? I no, I, I called us both, you know, criminals. I guess you could say. <laughs> now, uh, so we're back here at the Snowflex Games. It's always a privilege getting to know, you know, a lot of you guys, a lot of you really rad guys who get to come out and, and hang out with me. So uh, that was really encouraging. It's really encouraging. Awesome getting to know you this weekend. Uh, the great mountain biking trails, which I spent <laughs> yeah. about an hour and a half cruising we around. We thought you were lost for a little bit. <laughs> Has anyone seen Andy? I think he might have got eaten by a bear. But no, and then taking some laps here on the Snowflex, uh, yeah, I'm pretty knackered. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible, though. Last year, I know I got, uh, Drew was showing me around the campus and state-of-the-art, uh, just athletic 
venues all around, whether yeah. it's volleyball courts, basketball, you know, your typical team sports, but even to see them supporting the individual sports here, like skiing and snowboarding. And they even got a tubing hill on the side for the kids that just want to get nasty. Yeah, if this is a, if you're, you know, local to Lynchburg or even kind of in the surrounding area, this is such a great place to bring your kids, have some fun. It's a fun family atmosphere. A lot of great people, like I mentioned, a lot of good staff. The staff here is absolutely incredible. Shout out to the staff for, for hosting this and putting on such a great competition and atmosphere for the riders and for me and you both. Um, so, yeah, it's a great place to bring your kids. Great tubing runs. Learning ability is just absolutely incredible. And it's very comfortable falling, and you will fall. You, <laughs> watching these guys sometimes, you can think, you know, hey, this is really easy. I want to go out there and do some really, really, really cool tricks. And you can get there, but you got to start with falling. Everybody falls. Uh, if you're not falling, you're not learning. That was a, my always favorite saying. <laughs> because I hear a lot of people like, you professional snow. I'm like, nah, I'm more of a professional faller. I get paid to fall. I fall a lot. Yeah, sometimes you fall. Some days you're falling a lot more than you're landing things. So it's uh the challenge but it's such a rewarding challenge i think when you when you're out here and just uh you know enjoying riding it, it can be a lot of fun and as we saw with the formats we just had you only need to land 50 percent of the time yeah and so i think that kind of takes the challenge off but it, like we were saying as well is uh you know you have only have to land you know two solid runs but you only got five so you better you gotta it kind of lights a fire under your butt a little bit but it also gives the the chance to kind of Take a breather. You know? It gives you an opportunity to show some variety in your runs, having two yeah, different runs that count. A lot of times you have best of three, which is great, but someone can do the same run over and over and over. When I think having the two runs, you know, like we're going to see in the big air, they do have to do two different tricks if they want a combined two scores. Right. If they do the same trick every time, they will only get one score. So they're going to get half the points. Yeah, so we're going to have to see the variety in the big air, which I'm looking forward to seeing. And again, I have uh, kind of ridden with a lot of these guys out here, and so I think uh, if uh, you're tuned in right now, stick around, because uh, it's going to be a show that we can all really, really enjoy, so I'm, I'm excited. And this is Liberty Mountain Snowflake Center's Trails to Rail series. My name is Drew Sherwood. I'm the general manager at the Liberty Mountain Snowflex Center. We are located on Liberty University's scenic campus in Lynchburg, Virginia. The Liberty Mountain Snowflex Center is unique. It's the first one of its kind in North America. It offers year-round skiing and snowboarding as a training facility for freestyle skiers and snowboarders. Snowflex is a synthetic surface that was created by Britain Engineering designed to simulate the feel of real snow. Because of its design, Snowflex allows any level of rider to be able to advance because of its environment being safe and consistent. The Liberty Mountain Snowflake Center is designed for beginners, intermediates, and advanced skiers and snowboarders. We are continually updating our features so that our skiers and snowboarders can continue to advance in the terrain park area. At the bottom of the slope is the Barrick Falwell Lodge. It offers a full rental line of ski and snowboard equipment. It offers instructors to give ski and snowboard lessons, tickets to get your passes for the slope, and even concessions and retail. Our high performance facility sets the stage for the perfect battleground for this year's Trails to Rails competition. Would you give it up right now for Brent Washburn? He has an announcement for Snowflakes. Hey guys, we are taking 10 hand-picked competitors who have little to no experience snowboarding from the beginner slope to the terrain park in a head-to-head -head freestyle competition. This year we're doing uh, a, a little different. It's Trails to Rails, Battle of the Sexes. <laughs> five guys versus five girls. Over the next few weeks, we will be following these students as they journey to the rails, and they're gonna compete against each other in two months time. We will see each competitor overcoming obstacles and pushing themselves to learn and perfect the best tricks to bring to a final all out jam style competition. You as fans will be able to come out and watch the competition and cheer for your favorite team as they compete for the gold. The winning team wins an outerwear setup from Quicksilver or Roxy, valued at $500 each. Be sure to follow all of the action through our Facebook page as a new webisode drops every two weeks.
next time on Trails to Rails. So what we're gonna do tonight is we're gonna run you through a really quick beginner lesson. That was not really. As an oncology nurse navigator, basically my role is to help navigate and guide newly diagnosed patients through their journey. My primary patient population are women with breast cancer. Uh, I chose Liberty because a lot of uh, students in my youth group back home in Florida had gone to Liberty and you know, just they would tell me about the awesome experiences that they were having. I definitely feel that Liberty helped to adequately prepare me uh, for the nursing field. Not just with the classroom knowledge that I gained, but also with the clinical, uh, at the bedside, hands-on teaching. I really felt like that helped prepare me very adequately for my role. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Snowflex Games here in Lynchburg, Virginia. Beautiful blue skies as you can see as we're coming in. Sitting here with my partner Andy Finch and we're getting ready to start the uh, the ski big the big air. So, What you guys had maybe missed, hopefully you didn't, uh, if you're just now tuning in, we just got done with the rail jam. So let's kind of take a look back and see what we saw. We're going to start with the skiers. Mr. Kellen Baker with the ski slide, switch up 2-7 out, John Stelter as well. Top to bottom, I think he was probably the most impressive for me. But again, who am I to say? Because I'm not a judge. And then we got Mr. Isaac Shepard as well. So good, good group coming in from the skiers. Um, really, really quite impressive. What do you think, Mr. Finch? Oh, there we saw the wall ride, the little expression, not quite counting the score, but getting the amp up on the judge's score. There's Mr. Leprechaun starting 50-50, backside three out. There is, uh, here was Nathan getting very technical, a little bit squirrely on all his runs. Ben Sulo, another one of those riders that was just solid throughout. Isaac Gibson as well. We already mentioned him. But That's probably the cleanest yeah, back 2 said we saw definitely, definitely, definitely. out. And then we had uh, Brandon McHugh. He was uh, clean all the way top to bottom, one of those styly, just kind of relaxed riding. So it's a lot of different variations. But now we're headed over to the big air, which is uh, a lot of time the crowd favorite. It's a favorite of mine as well. I always enjoyed the jumps. And we're going to get ready to start the skier big air. So I'm pretty excited as well. And then we just got a nice look at the cheese wedge, as we call it, because it does look like a wedge of cheese. Yeah. Uh, that's the jump that they take off. Uh, we, we're looking at about 40 feet to the lip to knuckle. The knuckle's right at the top of the landing, because if you make your hand into a fist, the top would be the flats, like the deck, and then uh, your fingers would make up the landing. And again, the knuckle at the top. The sweet spot's usually about two to three feet from the knuckle. And then some guys are going to send it deep. They might travel 20, 30 feet uh, as we're watching yes, practice. We're just, I mean, they're just uh, warming up their legs, and they're doing some really, really impressive stuff. And I got word, actually, we're going to start with the snowboarders first, and we're going to end with the skiers. So we're going to take a few more uh, just warm-up runs, get the legs warm. Um, really who we're looking for today, I mean, from the big end, what we're looking for, really, again, it's the best two runs, but judges want to see two different tricks. You're not going to get scored unless you have two different solid tricks. So we're going to have to see the creativity, and we're going to have to see them mixing it up a little bit, which I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to. Absolutely. Gosh, I'm, look at that view, you guys. Check it out on your screen right now, just overlooking the uh, Liberty campus, the Lynchburg area. It's beautiful. Mountain bike around here is tons of fun. There you can see the lodge where we're all hanging. Uh, we got quite the crowd down here. Checking out all the sponsors. I know we got uh, the Paul Mitchell tent here, uh, which is the Sage Trial sal uh, Salon. Right. Get some product. I know one of the guys, he's got a nice black looking beard. Yeah. And, you know, he's running some Paul Mitchell product in there. So not just for <laughs> gals in the sal salon, but the guys too, you know, manicure your, your fine tuned beard. 
Um, we got Union Bindings down here sh showing off with the guy. Cap I saw some really nice caps. Yeah, no, boards. really, really. Impressed. Some next year models, too. So go down and check those out if you're here. Yeah, uh, I next was year ready to stuff. run off on those pal sticks, man. Yeah. <laughs> Tired of riding just park boards all the time. I want, I want like a little fish or a, I don't know. They're really coming out with some creative designs. Uh, big shout out to Pepsi for the support and Smith Optics, Dragon, K2. Again, they uh, made it all possible to throw down. Eighteen thousand dollars in cash prizes. Yeah, Two grand for first, twelve hundred for second, eight hundred for third. That's for each ski and snowboard, rail jam and big air. Four different uh, top threes. Yeah, it's uh, quite impressive, and that's gonna that's gonna attract a lot of good riders. I mean, that's a pretty cra good uh, cash purse, especially for you know April. April on the East Coast, there's a lot of snowboarders and skiers in the East Coast that, you know, aren't able to go to the competitions, make a little extra cash. So this is a great opportunity to come out, enjoy some good, you know, warm weather riding, which doesn't happen uh, very often in the U.S., that's for sure. Something that's so impressive with this Liberty Mountain in the Snowflex is how much time you can spend on your board, just lapping this thing, the repetition you can put in, kind of takes it to a new level, something that's hard to get at a ski resort. Um, Every single day of the year here. Yeah, it's summer, a, winter. You kind of avoid the whole, you know, lift experience where you're sitting on lifts for sometimes, you know, 30 minutes at a time. Where you here, you have a nice lift system. We even have a, a kind of a conveyor magic carpet lift where you can just stand on it if you have hard times getting used to the kind of the bar lift. But like you said, yeah, the the one of the most impressive things about this facility is the amount or the, the speed at which you can progress. Sometimes it can be a bad thing, but there's a lot of times where riders are doing tricks, you know, within a couple months that it takes a lot of riders years and years and years to work up to. And I think that's a credit to not only the ability to lap the park as much as you can, you can lap it all year long. We have great camps and, you know, places for you to train, but then also it's very, very forgiving. I know I've taken a lot of really bad falls on Snowflex to where most of the time on snow, I'd have a hard time getting up and kind of walking it off. But here at Snowflex, because of the foam pad underneath it and the surface that it is, it's very, very forgiving. It's almost like a sponge when you're landing on it. I mean, it does hurt, don't get me wrong. Well, one's got a layer right, to protect yeah. you from the cheese grater. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it can be painful at times, but it's, it gives you the opportunity that you're, you're waking up the next day and you're not overly sore because you took really bad falls. So I think that's a credit to that as well and kind of the technology that Brian Thomas you know, brought with the snowflakes is it's it's very very forgiving. So we are uh, we are about ready to start, and I think Game our on. first yeah, I'm excited. We're gonna start with the snowboarders first. We got Mr. Will Sharon dropping in, uh, Baltimore native, I believe, sitting up at the top, just re relaxing, I guess. It's a little bit of wind. You see a little bit of wind kind of blowing in his shirt. Not too bad. Uh, but we'll be on the lookout for this because they're going to see a lot of amplitude, a lot of distance, and sometimes with those gusts of wind, it makes things a little bit difficult, but it doesn't look too bad this right now. This gives you a little more flow. you got to angle your board just right as kind of the foil <laughs> or maybe a kite, and you'll get a little extra hang time. Yeah, and if anybody knows that, it's the it's the guy sitting right next to me, Mr. Andy Finch, you know, pro snowboarder for quite a long time. A lot of you might actually know him from the Amazing Race, competed in the Amazing Race. Fourth place, right? Fourth place? Not first, but it's fourth. Yeah, that's a good try. We had a great time. Yeah, it was a privilege fun. to see a bunch of different spots in the world that I've really never been to. We went to pretty much tropical or warm places, mm -hmm. and most of the places I've ever been have been very cold. Yeah, so Snow. yeah, I, wa I did watch a few episodes for the first time. I didn't, uh, so it was, it was pretty cool to watch. And so here we go, Mr. Will Sharon dropping in first hit, headed for the big booter. Let's see, front flip from Will, sticking it. Nice. Just Great kidding. way to start out. Love the front flip. Well, he is a uh, he. We called him the front flip king when I was here. He is uh, the only one I've seen at Snowflake so far throw down the double front flip. So I don't know if we'll see that today or Ooh. not, but that'd be pretty heavy. Yeah, definitely. Mr. Hey. Mr. Ryan Leeds is up next, and uh, we saw him. Is this Ryan Leeds? This. I believe this is Ryan Leeds. It I'm is looking Ryan. at. Yeah, I'm looking at the 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 video. It is Ryan. Um, we saw him really absolutely throw down on the rail jam. Let's see if he can trans, uh, transfer over to the big air. Backside shifty, shifty, 540, very clean. Let's go for a second. You know, judges are always looking for those grabs. Uh, Ryan choosing not to grab his board, but judges definitely appreciate a nice shifty in there. Yeah, and I think the, the double shifty or the disco spin, I think that's one of my favorite looking tricks because it just shows the board control that Ryan has. 
not only is he able to stop his board once and really shifty, that's what a shifty is when you stop your feet from the rotation and it kind of just pauses your feet for a second, but he does it twice in the same spin of 540. So I'm impressed by that. We'll see what the judges think as well. Again, they always are looking for you to get the got grab, solid grab in there as well. But here's Mr. Ben Sulo dropping in. There's the backside 720 mu grab stomping it. Perfectly perfect. I you know earlier Pac saw him slide it around. That was not slid around in any way. Held the grab the whole way through. Well done. It went big too, landing right about that uh, yeah. first black line, which is probably 20 feet down from the knuckle. Here you see in the replay yeah. that mute grab. He uh, grabs so hard sometimes that it almost just flexes that board right up to his knees. It's just. Uh, I noticed that with the bigger guys. Abe Teeter was always a real fun rider of mine, uh, favorite rider to watch as he just put all that power. We call him the gentle giant, but he would wrench on the board. There we saw. I believe that was the a front sky. Seven from sky. Yeah. Grabbing melon on that, very clean. So there you go. Back, um, we saw a seven backside seven from Ben. This guy doing the front seven. I know you were. Uh, I didn't see the takeoff. Was that a front seven? Yeah, it was a front side seven with a nice melon grab okay. there. What would you say your favorite grab is to kind of watch? I know I have a couple. To watch? Yeah, to, when you see like a grab, you know, it's all, I think jumps are just the most impressive. We see Brian dropping in here. It's just with the style that can come along with it. It's a nice clean backflip. We call that the freedom flip as you lay out a backflip. Uh, you know, sometimes not the most technical trick, but probably one of the most favorite tricks of any snowboarder yeah. to do. Just because just of the feeling of you're flying. You're yeah, definitely. Seeing the world go around once. It Definitely. is a good feeling. Yeah, that's actually, I would probably say that is my favorite jump trick right there for me to actually do, just because there's nothing better than just when you're up in the air for a long time, just floating a nice, lengthy back. Especially if it's like an 80, 90 foot jump, you're just just floating for days. For days. Right, Bob, drop again. Kind of a, like a weird, like backside off the toes, like really, really heavy off the toes. I get so much action here, I look down. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was like almost like an immediate park here as it comes in. Yeah, regular foot going yeah. forward. That would call that kind of a misty seven, but he, he threw it a little bit early. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of a little different. I don't know if uh, it was intentional or not, but uh, well, it's pretty unique. Tangible. Just a little, little tip here. Be a little patient on throwing that backside seven. You want to make sure you get your nice pop from your tail off the lip of the jump as Nathan drops in. Puffy dropping switch off his toes. Cap five. Get to bring in the technical side of things back over to the big air as well. We saw him in the rail jam earlier. If you're just shoot, tuning in, put on quite an impressive show over there. And so starting off strong again with uh, with a nice technical trick. Check out this trip. replay. You know, I think the wind's definitely a factor, and the position he wasn't there, I would say the wind kind of grabbed him a little bit, forcing him to let go of his tail as he was spinning around. Mr. Uh, Zach Buckle dropping in now. He is a goofy rider as well from uh, Syracuse, New York. He is one of the team riders as well at uh, the Liberty University snowboard team. So I'm interested to see him. I know he has a pretty uh, pretty big bag of tricks as well. He's got the duct tape, the signature yellow snow duct tape. Yeah, yellow yeah, duct tape. It's got some designs going. He's kind of matching the pants. It's excellent. Dropping in. I know he was talking about earlier the bigger. He's been warming up all day. Double backflip. Oh, oh, just sitting down on it a little bit. He, he does have that pretty solid, so I definitely can see him. I know he wants to get that one out of the way quickly and then uh, see what else he can do. But uh, double back, here we go again. Whipping around, there's one, two, and just comes back a little bit on that back foot. Which really is whipping that, making sure he gets around. You can see his nose barely clearing the knuckle there. I mean, if that hooks, that's not a fun way to fall. Uh, I guarantee his hands are stinging a little bit yeah, after just dragging. Yeah, just a little bit. And he had the nice knee grab as well, and then kind of getting the, the tuck. All right, coming up next is Ryan Bozeman. No, excuse me. It's 38. <laughs> Keep I'm pretty sure this is gonna be this is gonna be Brandon McHugh. I think okay, I saw. I Brandon. remember him from uh, from the rail jam. Brandon McHugh dropping in. Don't have. Okay, we, he was a, a late addition to the, to the bunch. We'll see if the late addition can be uh, be the king on top. <laughs> that's always a cool story when they're not supposed to be, and then they are, and then they you know end up pulling out something that's crazy. Nice styly front three. Kind of missing the grab a little bit. I think he might have just touched it. The judges really want to see them really lock into that grab, get a full grip on it. So 
I think Brandon can kind of sharpen that up a little bit. But I enjoy a front three from time to time. I think it's not the most difficult, but you can make it look really stylish. It kind of pokes out that front foot. I think we're going to see it happen a bit with that headwind. Uh, the wind definitely comes in fact. You're already probably moving about 25, 30 miles an hour as you're traveling through the air, plus the 10, 15 mile an hour headwind. All of a sudden, you got a 45 mile an hour gust the wind coming through you. Right. Here goes Will Sharon dropping in now. Oh, go for the double tail grab behind the back on that front three. Dracula grab. You keep hearing us talking about that uh, that style points. And we'll try to capitalize on that with that not, front three. I'm not sure if he quite got both hands on it. I know he's really close. He was working on that earlier in warm-ups, kind of struggling with the same thing. Let's look at it here. Got one, got two. He did. He, did. he got, he got two. it. Yeah, yeah, he did. That's pretty mean. You don't see that grab yeah. very often at all. Way to keep it creative. Again, Judge is looking for two different tricks uh, to give a max points. So if you only do one, you're only be getting 50% of your possible score. Here's Mr. Ryan Leeds. He's the one that dropped in uh, first run, if you remember, with the backside five uh, shifty shifty. So let's see what he kind of uh, has for us on run number two here. Dropping in regular. Yeah. Oh. Backside seven, corking it out. You grab just a little on second landing, kind of coming in back seat. Very big from Ryan. I'm not uh, I'm not too used to seeing him go quite that big. I think he's kind of all amped up on the crowd here in the, the competition spirit. We see him go very, very big. Here it is again. Very corked out seven, just kind of coming around a little back seat, sitting it down. Uh, definitely something I've seen him land before, but uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to see if he can pull that one out again. He's kind of motioning to the crowd that he might not try it again, but I hope that's a, hope that's a joke. <laughs> Again, wind, you know, if a gust of wind backs off riser in the air, they could send it a little bit deeper as Ben Sulo with the kind of the underflip melon grab. That was nice. Yeah, he's got, um, Ben Sulo has the, the deepest bag, I think, out of this, this group of different variations of tricks. He can definitely go very, very big. In my opinion, I think he'd probably be the one to beat, but we saw that first one where a lot of people were actually putting down some, some solid runs. So Ben definitely has some pressure on him. I think, was that front side rodeo? I couldn't quite tell from that angle right there. Yeah, you could call it rodeo or underflip, grabbing uh, me kind of a method on it. So good, fun style. Sky Gale have clearance for drop. And uh, Mr. Sky, Sky Gale, up next. looking for clearance. The comedian of the bunch, always a good vibe. He is, man, he's a good time. Good, S good. Super fun skating the mini ramp with him this morning. Yeah. Always the big smile on his face, and we can. We were talking about that earlier. Such appreciation for you know people who you're around, and they're just enjoying life and making sure everybody else around them enjoys life as well. That's I love one of the Google support Sky. this college has for boarders. I mean, we got the skate park down in town that's legit. Some really fun mini ramps and kind of, yeah, it's great. Yeah, definitely great uh, board facilities. This guy oh, throws man. down <laughs> front side. Uh, Another front seven. Hey, it was a front seven, but it just looked like uh, I'm not sure how he got all the way around to seven on that. <laughs> like, I'm pretty. I was good. He kind of drifted as you saw him getting fairly close to that battleship. Rail. Yeah. Maybe get a little replay and we'll front. break it down yeah, for you a little bit. Right okay, so it's a cab. Nope, it's a front seven. That is a front seven melon grab. Good style as he corked it out. There was Brian dropping in rapidly right after Sky yeah, with, uh, right yeah, with, uh, with a little shifty back to method. So keeping it nice and uh, old school, keeping it relaxed. That's you, good to see. You're talking about old school. You know, we saw that shifty earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was Ryan. And yeah. that's something that kind of originated from the get-go when tricks weren't super gnarly, but it was all about style and having fun. And then Aaron Style kind of made a comeback about five, six years ago. And here we see a day with a double backflip. That's the second double back he we've seen. Yeah, Ryan Bozeman. That, again, that was a, one of the... Uh, it's kind of, here he goes again, coming up to it. It's more, it's not even quite a backflip. It's more like um, of an underflip almost kind of call deal. It, uh, It's a back, we call that more of a wildcat. But he's still, even though it's more of the cartwheel position, he... Uh, Kind of was sideways still in there. Yeah, that it was, was kind of weird. It kind of like he was almost going front side off his heels. More of just kind of wildcat and more back. I'm interested to see that again. See if uh, Brian can do that one again. Nathan Jenkins going really big. Very, really very big. nice backside seven corked out. Looks like he might have grabbed the nose. I couldn't quite see from this angle, but uh, probably one of the biggest <laughs> tricks we've seen as far as amplitude. 
You can see he's, he's stoked, psyched yeah. about that, and he should be. He yeah, went big. definitely. And the, uh, I think uh, either Taylor knows. I'm not quite sure if we look at it here. Yeah, that's a backside nose. Seven. That was excellent. Yeah, that's impressive. That could be uh, one of our top scores. I know we saw Ben stick his backside seven mute, and mm -hmm. Sky his his frontside melon. You know, I think if Sky can get a little bit more amplitude just to kind of compete with what we've seen from uh, Ben and Nathan. I mean, that's definitely taken into consideration. It is called the big scare. Oh, I mean, big air. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's something the judge is looking for. Yeah. Here goes Zach Buckle. He uh, did the double back the last time, if you remember. Really close. Bubble beat tape job. Yeah. On the pants. Very quick double back flip. Not quite the uh, the amplitude and distance. But here we go again. This one looked yeah. Hard. There you go. Awesome. Zach Buckle. That was very, very He, he definitely waited a little bit longer off the lip. And giving him a little bit more time, making sure he clears that knuckle. But uh, quick little break. Thank you, guys. We'll be right back. Us. Dogwood and Holly is an alternative folk band that uses traditional bluegrass instrumentation to create a variety of sounds that fall within the folk genre. This is really a great school for musicians to go to uh, in general because there are so many opportunities to play just on Liberty's campus, Coffeehouse probably being the best example. I am studying theater performance. All of the professors love the Lord. Um, they take prayer requests before classes. They follow up with you. They really care about the students individually. In addition to that, they are incredible professors of the craft. Um, I've learned so much from them about the art of acting and the performances that this department gives are really just out of this world. Snowflex Games here at Liberty Mountain. Check out that backside seven from Ryan. Man. These guys I'm, are boosting back man. seven. It's kind of <laughs> a popular trick. That, one out that was awesome. Nowhere. And here we're going to go back to, we missed two runs. This is Brandon McHugh, kind of the fill-in that we had last minute. With the front three with the grab, and then Will really locking in the double tail. Uh, that's kind of what we missed. And so a uh, little bit of perfection from both of them. Both those runs were their second runs, but they also wanted to kind of see it get a little bit more style. So now we're on to the third run. So. Here we go, we just saw Ryan Leeds stomp the, the back seven melon. Or was that mute? I can't quite remember. But uh, here we go with Ben Sulo dropping in here. Sulo, man, he should create a trick because that'd be nice to hear like a Sulo flip. There's the double wow, back. Wow, so far. And grabbing it and going a little bigger. So, I mean, definitely the best double back we've seen so far. I didn't even see him practice that. No, nah, I haven't seen I've seen him do it before a couple times, so I know he has it. I think the strategy there is almost just negating the double back, the other double back flips that have happened. He wants to make sure that he has that unlocked even bigger, even further down with the grab. That way he kind of almost like negates the other double backflips and he can kind of move on to something else. A Again, little bit of strategy needing two solid tricks. He's got right. that back seven and the double back, so probably one of the strongest combos. Again, you mentioned earlier his his bag of tricks is very healthy. Right. And uh, that in this kind of format, that's going to give him an advantage. Yeah, definitely. I've seen uh, Ben Sulo. I'm not. I'm with the win. I'm not sure we'll see, but I've seen you know some double cork tens from him before. I've seen some double rodeos from him. This is Sky Gale dropping in. Going for the backside 180. Looks like he caught a little bit of wind. Lost a little amplitude, uh, but still landing it clean. He, he does have the front side seven already in the back from yeah. earlier runs. This is his third. He's still going to get two more. Mm -hmm. This guy having a great time, always. Always. Another guy that's been having a good time all day is Ryan. Or, sorry, Brian sitting up at the top. We saw him mix it up last time with uh, Shifty to Method kind of uh, skipping out on the spinning. Just wanted to show the judges that, uh, you know, he had a little bit of style as well. All right, Brian Goofy Footer, he is going normal for himself. 
There's the back side, seven. Kind of whipping around, come a little unstuck on the landing. Uh, quick board touch. Something you know, to notice for the judges, uh, that, or just to mention that they definitely look for is um, some of that variety. Some, you know, they do watch practice and make sure they know what to expect, how, what's going to be thrown. That way they know where to set their scores as far as judging goes. And when they don't see something that was even practiced and then the rider comes out and does it cold, cold turkey, you almost you can get a little extra points there. Here we go, the double back, kind of a side flip. Yeah, see, it's a, not quite wildcat. It's more of a, I don't know what to call it, to be honest, Andy. I mean, you've been around the game longer than I have. Have you seen it's something wild, like kind of yeah. wildcat-ish? Yeah, it's a little bit, you know, throwing a little bit sideways like that can make it harder to land. Uh, Ryan Bozeman definitely looking to stick that. You know, that kind of puts the pressure on him. We've seen him do it three times now. Uh, I think he wants he wants a little big, a little bit cleaner. But he does need two stomp tricks. He's only got two runs left. So pressure's, uh, pressure's on. You see Nathan giving a little thanks. Coming in switch. Yeah, we got a switch. Front side, so that'd be a cab seven. Off the toes. That was... You know, that's impressive. You don't see many guys spinning off their toes on the snowflex. Yeah, so that was really nice from Nathan. Again, I think he really prides himself to his advantage on being very, very technical, um, having a deep bag of tricks, kind of like we were mentioning with Ben, uh, where, you know, Nathan almost prides himself on having stuff that no one else has. You know, that's what he kind of, you know, really thrives after. And so we see a lot of tricks, both in rails to big air, of very technical stuff that we're not seeing from everybody else. It's kind of separating him from the other group. So good to see from Nathan. He's been riding well all day, really both sections of the rail and the uh, Something that changes the look of the trick when you do spin off your toes, you have a little bit different axis. Uh, so it almost makes it look like a different trick. You know, that's how the original rodeo by Daniel Frank was done back in the day, really spinning heavy off his toes. I don't know how many names he, or how many people remember that name, Daniel Frank. I, to be honest, I don't even know if I've heard that name myself. Come Daniel. on, I know, man. Ethan, I didn't want to admit it on air. I know, man. Hey, Third I knew. Jamie Lynn, Sean Palmer, Sean I know, Palmer. Yeah, so Tay, see, come yeah, on, you're, let's keep you're, the names no, going. No, now see, now you're naming names I've okay. heard of before. Well, but. Daniel Frank, he was kind of the heyday with Terry. Hey, check out the backside nine. Kind of got a little. Up <laughs> he, uh, he, he just kept spinning as he landed, you know. Well, I think goes, we're gonna <laughs> goes to the back nine, first 900 we've seen so far. Uh, just, I don't know whether it was wind or just lost his axis, had to open up in the air, but staying on his feet. Yeah. That was exciting. Here we get a little replay. There's the back nine, you see him open up. <laughs> yeah. Kind of slid that last section around. You know, again, whether that's wind or just took off a little funky. Managed to stay on his feet. That's just good air awareness yeah, when they open definitely. up like that, knowing where they're at. We saw Zach do the double backflip, so he knows where he's at. You know? Okay, front, front, uh, excuse me, front five from Brandon. Ooh. Hitting the toe edge there at the bottom. It happens. It does. It happens. But uh, we saw him doing 360s earlier, so. Yeah, stepping up for Brandon. Another rotation. There you go. Now, I don't think judges are judging the stopping. As long as you. They want to see. No, just like, I think he's fine. On just that like one. football, where they're looking for control, like making sure you actually have the ball in your hand. Same thing with tricks. They're making sure you stay on your feet. You're riding away with control. There you see him, complete control, and then just he stops. Yeah, to toe edge. Those can be a doozy on the yeah, shoulders. Yeah, man, there. I was just whiplash from that can be pretty extensive. We'll just get a quick little shot of the snowflex and the padding that yeah, is under go. that snowflex. I I know there has been places that have run it just on straight plywood. Not so soft. Yeah, no, not as fun. Not so soft. That would be a shoulder destroyer <laughs> oh without gosh. that padding. Yes. It's one of the most common ways to blow a shoulder. I was hoping that it puts a lot of force right onto it. I would know. I've had three shoulders, shoulder surgeries. Okay, we got drop. Well, Sharon, Will. back at the top. This is run number four, so we're going to have two more. Will sticking out. Kind of missing the grab. Possibly hitting a little wind. Yeah. Um, we'll see on the replay. Heading over to the grass as if well. If he was speed checking or if he just went straight and that was a little bit of wind grabbing him. That's usually a sign of wind when you have to let go. Kind of grabs you and throws you off your, yeah. your axis. Yeah, I mean, he was going for, it looked like just like a mute grab. So just kind of threw him off a little bit. It is a little breezy. You can see their jerseys blowing in the wind there. This is Ryan Leeds. He has the, uh, the shifty shifty five and the backside seven. Let's see what else he can kind of throw for us. Trying Going to sharp nine. nine. Yeah, so just a little bit 
Adam 180 to that same backside 70 did earlier as you see him let go of the grab, look over the shoulder for yeah. that extra 180. I think he's surprising himself right now. I think he's just he feeling it that. from and he's just feeling it from the rail jam and coming over because I was, you know, we've been here all day hanging out, having a good time, skating the mini ramp, jumping on the trampoline, watching a lot of good snowboarding and warms up. Watching the bigger, I don't think I saw time. Ryan do anything past the five, really. And so now we've already seen him get the five, got the seven, going for the nine. Well, yeah, after step. that rail jam, these guys did go straight to the jumps and, and right. start warming up, practicing, where this morning they were really focusing on the rails. But things are getting heated up, you know. Se second to last run for Ben as he does. Oh, gosh. Is he going back 10? Back 10. Back 10 just reverted a little bit. Getting a little bit of love wow. for Brian over there. That was pretty mean. If he could land that man last year, he did a big backside nine. And uh, he's he has stepping it. up his game. Both those guys, both those gentlemen right there getting on the lift that you're looking at, they both uh, were really, really close to some big tricks. So look forward to uh, run number four. And he just a little... Well, one thing these guys are, are dropping in, uh, they have direct sun into their eyes. They have wind in sun. And you, know, you hear the phrase, may the sun beat your back. Uh, it is not right now. <laughs> yeah, but we're still seeing a lot of a lot of good riding. I think it's going to get a little bit more difficult as the sun is dropping right into their eyes, like you would mentioned, a nice headwind. As you can see that shot right there, you can see that beautiful, beautiful sunset here in Lynchburg, Virginia. It is beautiful, but it can be a little bit challenging as the sun is just beating down on the, the riders right now. So that'll be a little bit of a challenge. We've got two more runs to go as we just saw Sky Gale uh, come down. All right, check it out. Here's kind of the rodeo version, heavy off his heels, front side seven, Melon. Mm -hmm. Very nice trick, a little unstuck on the landing. You might even hear say landing on the bolts. You want to land on your bolts. That's where your bindings are connected to your board. If you land on the bolts, you're going to ride away just like that as we just saw the backside seven. From Brian Ducharm. Yeah, Brian's a little tricky one. We're watching Sky and all of a sudden Brian's hitting the jump right after. He's so quick. Yeah, he, he is quick, man. He's a, he's a go-getter. I don't even know if he's waiting for the starter to give him a go. He's just like, <laughs> okay, he rode away from the landing and I'm dropping it. Now my turn to snowboard. <laughs> my turn. <laughs> Going for it. Get out of my way. <laughs> Judges, I don't even think we're looking up. Maybe they were. No, Those gotta, guys, they got a tough job to be able to write down a score <laughs> yeah. that quick. But a lot of times that, that first impression and that first score that you write down is the most accurate. Uh, the more they talk about it, the more you can second guess. And it's a dangerous thing to discuss a score. They got a tough job, those three judges, but they've done a wonderful job. Again, Liberty actually brought them in. Here goes the double wildcat again uh, from Ryan Bosman. Hasn't quite been able to put it down. I don't know strategy-wise. I mean, I saw we saw him stick the first one. I think it was a uh, back five. Gone for the, the double now twice, as you see here. Yeah, it was his third one he's gone for, actually. Third one, yeah, excuse me. And so I don't know if that's something. He that slowed he... that one down a bit. You know, it's a lot of times if you're coming unstuck, that's a good way yeah. to make sure you land. Slow it down a little bit. Right. But that one was just a little too much. So hopefully, now he's over rotated and under rotated, he can find the happy medium as Nathan drops in. Goofy foot. Yes, yeah, which. No, that's a normal going for the back nine. Did he go for double tap? Tail grab on that? I saw one hand. I don't think the other hand but was really good. But I see him reaching? I don't know. I, I, to be honest, I don't Let's think check I the saw replay it. on that. But yeah, going for the backside seven, and you could see him looking nine, but having to slide it around. All right, check it out. Look for his hands, grabs. No, okay, it was just, just, just one. Just the yeah. one right just here. Just one. Got it. But you can see his hand there. I, yeah, I think definitely. that's what I saw. I forgive you. It's okay. Don't worry Thanks. about it. I appreciate Don't worry it about it, Andy. Hey, Tay, they're spinning really fast. We watch a lot of snowboarding today, a lot of great snowboarding. So. Spin to win. Spin to win. Here's uh, Zach Buckle. Huck we on saw a dollar, him go. Huck uh, on a buck. <laughs> you ever heard that song? I've never heard that song. Gosh, was it Meltdown Project? It was the fall section. Uh, Daniel Frank was in that. You should know. All right, backside seven. <laughs> you can see how bad he wants as he reverts to nine. Just taking a little breather there on the quarter pipe. Grab a little... <laughs> time in the shade I think uh, he's pretty he's pretty amped up he was telling me before the competition he really wants to win today because if he wins his fiance his fiance said he can get a ps4 if he wins so he really really wants to win that's I think incentive. yeah so that's an incentive about to get married you gotta save those dollars but she said hey if you win I'll save let you get I'll let you get the ps4 so Zach that's the frustration come from Zach he just <laughs> wants to play video games <laughs> he's out here doing the real thing man I'd like to see some riders hit that quarter pipe, man, as we saw the wall ride earlier. Okay, we got, I believe this is Brandon. Yep, Brandon McHugh. Fourth run, there's nice. front five reaching for the nose, not quite getting it. 
But so a great are, show. One yeah. more run. So far, a big and big show. That's Brandon McHugh. We have Will Sharon coming up in just a second, but we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Tune in, guys. We'll see you soon. Snowflex Games here in Lynchburg, Virginia. We got uh, during that commercial break quite a bit of action went down. I yeah, we miss uh, we miss some good stuff. Here goes Will Sharon with the double front. We were talking about that earlier. I didn't think he'd pull he it out. It. Yeah, he pulls he, it out the double did. front flip. Doesn't quite stick it. Pretty so close. close. <laughs> so close. He's still sitting over here, all smiles. Ryan Lee, man, that look at that. That backside five mute. Why did he tweak that out so, so hard? So hard. We need to see that again. The replay on. That was Ryan Leeds. And then you got Ben Sulo coming in right Check after him. Backside, 900 clean. That might have just been the nail in the coffin. Yeah, for, uh, it was uh, super clean. And then we got Sky Gale dropping in now. There's the front wow. side three mount. Just kind of slowed this big. down. Trying to give the judges a different trick to look at. You might think it's snowing right now, but it's actually stickers flying around. Stickers flying everywhere right now. So a lot of good giveaways. If you're down watching it on campus or somewhere in Lynchburg, you should probably head up because we got a lot of stuff to give away. This, we got one more event after this. There is a ton of stuff. I know they do big, not just for the, the riders for prizes, but yeah. they also do a lot of crowd tosses with uh, Dragon Products, Smith Optics, K2. A lot of good stuff going around. Ryan Bosman, we saw him stick out the seven last time. Yeah, we just saw another backside seven. Looked like he might have been reaching Mellon. Not sure if he quite got it. A little alley up on the quarter yeah, pipe. Yeah, there you go. You hey, you me. said you said you wanted to see the quarter yeah, pipe. Three riders straight hit the quarter pipe for you, man. Appreciate it. Much appreciated. But a few, four more riders to go here. Fifth and final run. We got Ryan Bosman. He's been uh, double wildcatting. Getting closer, I think, every time. We just want to see him stick. Yeah, this. come on, Ryan. You got this, brother. This is the one. Get the pop. Slow he it down, like fast. you said. He went too slow last time. Just find that happy medium. We're going to coach him through it right now. Yeah. All Ryan, right. can you hear us? Get your helmet on straight. Fix your gloves. There you go. Keep your tuck. Charge and wait, wait. Pop. Still throwing it a uh. little early. I think the main problem is just he's throwing it too early. Uh, that's one of the hardest things. Anytime you're learning a trick or trying something difficult, is telling yourself, wait, wait. And you actually verbally... Sometimes you got to say it out loud to yourself as you're riding is tell yourself to wait as you approach that lift. Yeah, it's almost like he could have even pulled that around to. I mean, there you see his shoulder almost catching the lip, which then almost catching the knuckle. Uh, it's a pretty tight spin. It's pretty, you know. A lot of your momentum actually comes from that lip. So if you're throwing before the lip, you're going to lose a lot of your momentum. There you see why he's tucking it so hard. Yeah, Nathan Jenkins dropping in. All right, can he get the back nine? I think he wants it. Oh, grip the nose. Came around nine, but losing his axis, making focusing so much on his grab. <laughs> Nathan he... reached around the high and he filmed the impact a little bit. Backside, got the tail. That's one thing I've really been impressed about Nathan is every one of his tricks so far, he's been locked in on the grabs. I mean, we've seen it with the wind and kind of the, the setup so far. It's been hard for riders getting thrown off access to miss the grab and kind of skip out on it. 
uh, even with the kind of going off axe there, looking for Nathan still locked in the grab. Uh, Zach going for the back seven, having to revert to nine, but getting the grab. That was a solid trick, you know. Uh, I think he's had a couple bobbles in some of his runs. That score could hold up for him. He's it's got the he's got the two. one big one to go. So he's goofy. That might be a backup score for him. I can't yeah, all I five. think I think all, he hasn't really gone down too much on any of them, but a lot of them have been a lot of just reverting. I think so. He never really locked one into where he just stomped it, like we say in the business, where it's just you know no revert on the bolts right away clean. We didn't see too many of those from Zach. But. Last rider drop, Brandon, the shoe, and at the end of the. As we started, there's a nice Very big front clean. three. Wow, that was really clean. Very clean. Let's, well, well done from Brandon. Yeah, that. well, I, I like seeing a good clean three from time to time. Well, there you have it, folks. There's the, there's the snowboarding big here, air. The snow flex <laughs> game. Still skier, big air to come. Check out this replay. Look at this front three. Getting a solid grab. Yeah. Well just done cruising. from Brandon. Well, that's just uh, that's just like a warm up almost. We got a uh, skier big air coming up next. I love some ski big air. I'm pretty excited. We are gonna take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Andy Finch, Ethan Aker here at the second annual Snowflakes game. See you guys soon. <laughs> Liberty University. Um, people try to describe it to me, but coming here was just amazing. And when you see the chancellor and president and their family is around, then you see all the other people that are around with their family members, and then you see the excitement on people's faces, the students, uh, and getting a gathering with all the sports teams. But then we all here for the same common goal. We're here serving Christ, and Liberty University stands for that. So that's why people all come together here, again, whether it's here in person, but also on the online courses too. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron. As a father of six children, I recognize the importance of selecting a university that is not only gonna prepare my kids for their career, but inspire and empower them to incorporate their faith into all aspects of their life. At Liberty, I believe that parents can rest, assured their kids are gonna be surrounded by good positive influences, allowing them to make the most of their college experience while they train to change their world. Virginia Snowflex Games, Big Air. We just saw the snowboarders complete their fifth and final run as we uh, take a look at what just went down as the skiers prepare and warm up. But check it out, there is the, du the double jiffy <laughs> backside 540. Double back from Zach. Yeah, that was one of the clean ones. There's Ben says, hey, I can do that too. Mine's gonna be real big. Bigger. <laughs> Nathan Jenkins, that was the, the cab uh, seven. Brian uh, going for the seven as well. A lot of 720s, a lot of clean 720s. I think that's the uh, the guy that we saw that was about to come in. Uh, I think we're going to see him on top. Let's, uh, we're going to take a look at the, the standings here in just a second. Called it Ben yep. Sulo right in, the, right in the high life there, 168 in first place. Nathan Jenkins is 154, and then Ryan Leeds taking the third spot with a 132. I know it says 32 that it's a one there in front of it, so 132 from Ryan Leeds. So, pretty and uh, pretty impressive stuff. I, I enjoy, you know, the big air. That was one of my passions. Was definitely the big air. So, really fun stuff. My surprise there actually was would have to be would have to be Ryan Leeds. Really, I haven't seen him really hit jumps too much. Ben Sulo, like I said, his bag of tricks goes super super deep. So I was really impressed with that. But the newcomer, who I haven't really got a lot of chance to see ride that I've been impressed with from rails over to Big Air would be Nathan Jenkins. Again, a lot of technical tricks, holding his grabs, which I love seeing, and just having a great time. So yeah, Judge definitely hold a strong value on that. But that backside five shifty, as far as two tricks go, if you're gonna do two, I mean, a stylish one, like that shifty backside five, and then like a 900, that's a really strong combo in what we've seen here today. Or even the double back, I mean, uh, the cool thing about Ben Sulo, the guy we saw on top there, is he, you never know exactly how judges are going to score, especially right. when you don't see the scores till the end of the event. And he, he kind of covered his bases with the huge backside seven, 
Uh, the huge backs had nine and the double back. So sometimes double backs might be scoring higher. And right. Sometimes sevens and then the nine. He landed that nine very, very clean. I guarantee that was one of his top scores. Yeah, definitely. And I, again, I was kind of mentioning this earlier. It was almost like he had a good order, good drop order. I think we saw him going uh, kind of middle of the pack there right behind Ryan where he was seeing these tricks from Zach. You know, Zach pulled out the double backflip first. And then Ben's almost going right behind them doing the same trick, but we're seeing it with better amplitude, further distance, a little bit better on the grabs. And so it's almost like, hey, you got that trick. I got that trick as well. I'm going to just do a little bit better. Yeah, and nice then we're seeing exchange. the seven. Yeah, we're seeing the seven. Did the seven as well. And then we saw the perfect nine. But now we're moving on to the ski big air. We have Mr. Isaac Shepard dropping in. There's a 720 tail grab. Very, very clean. Taking it about 15 feet down from the knuckle. Again, the knuckle being the top of the landing. So here, you need to learn that term. Yeah, you definitely need to. Again, make a fist. Look at your hand. Back your hands, the deck. The, your fingers being the, the landing. And your knuckles being the part you do not want to land on. That's actually one of the harshest places to land. Bad for the knees, man. Bad oh. for the knees. <laughs> yeah. Got Mr. Carson Kerr dropping in now. Dropping in switch. Switch 720 as well with a truck driver grab. That's where he's reaching down, grabbing both of the tips of his skis, almost like a you picture driving like a giant truck. I think that's where skiers, I'm assuming that's where skiers came up with it. Uh, so we got a Switch 7 truck driver from Mr. Carson Kerr. Suspenders were flying, a little yeah. extra style points. The skiers uh, are known for the baggy wear, that is for sure. Sam Miles dropping in Switch, approaching this jump. And there's the nice slow 540. Getting a solid grab, giving a thumbs up to the crowd. A little double fist pump. Again, this, there's nothing wrong with claiming and, and showing your excitement yeah. before landing something. It's good to be pumped. Good to be pumped. Here we go. First of the, the two brothers that I'm really going to be interested in seeing tonight, Mr. Tim Stelter, the older brother. They both threw down in the rail jam, as we saw earlier. We have John Stelter who's going to come up next. Um, but I know both of them, kind of a lot like Mr. Sulo over on the snowboard side, have a very, very deep bag of tricks, and they're dropping one after another, so we could see quite a show from these two. Very nicely corked out 900. Oh, and some good speed on the quarter pipe, too, <laughs> just real smooth in the transitions. Look at that grab and the tweak, though, from Tim as he grabs his lead ski, kind of crosses it, and then just tweaks it right behind his back. I think you can do that trick much cleaner than that. I mean, there's no point in him doing that same trick again because no. he just nailed it. He got the grab. Very clean. Beach balls are flying through the landing. <laughs> I know we got some Neff beach balls flying around. <laughs> Very appropriate, actually, with the, the sun that's been out. The, it is pretty warm. I think we're right around the 80-degree mark. Yeah, it's been a beautiful, beautiful day. Absolutely. Beautiful day for some snow flexing. Here you go, Tim. Uh, it's so fun out here. John Stelter dropping in, trying to get as much speed as he can, making himself very small. Truck driver switch up. Nice 720 from John. Kind of throwing a little stiffy grab in yeah. there. Good style. His Stelter, Stelter brothers, uh, no stranger to a little extra style. Yeah, there you go. Here he goes right here. He's going to switch up his grab. Nice truck driver, and then just kind of releases a little bit earlier. I think he might have wanted another grab there. I've seen him kind of do multiple grabs in, within 720s. Sometimes when you're spinning this kind of wind, you'll feel it grabbing. and you kind of let go just to make sure you stay on Keep point. Keep your balance. Yeah, you definitely need the arms just to kind of balance you out sometimes. You can hold your grabs all day long, but if you don't land on the bolts of your your bindings, you are not going to get a decent score. Yeah, here goes Kellen Baker dropping into the head when he was checking the wind a little bit. Can you see him just tucking up really tight just to get as much speed as possible? Wow. That Answering was right back yeah. to John. I mean, same trick. Maybe he held the grab just a hair longer, maybe even went a little bit bigger. You saw him really tuck off the dropping. Yeah, it's a nice uh, seven again with the truck driver grab. What I liked about Kellen's here when you're watching the replay, look how high he gets up on his skis. That shows the flexibility from Kellen, but it makes the style of the trick, you know, the uniqueness of the trick. He's not grabbing really close to his boots. He's grabbing really, really high up on his skis. We just missed uh, Connor Tatum there. I was actually watching the replay, so I'm not even quite sure what Connor did. So if we can get a replay for Connor. Right? Connor's a sneaky one again, <laughs> yeah, huh? It's a, he's going to be the one that we have to watch out for, uh, much like Brian, or Ryan from the last competition. So Connor Tatum dropping in. I know Connor personally. I'm sure it was uh, pretty fantastic, whatever it was. So well, look, way to go, Connor. I know you landed it, so that's impressive. <laughs> 
Yeah. We need a little feedback. Get some blogs going, huh? Yeah. That'd be, that'd live, be a good thing live add. tweet us. You know. Tweet <laughs> us. Yeah. You know, I just got a tweet. I avoided so long. Did the fan say, "Hey, get a Twitter"? Was no, it the fans? Fox asked me to get it. Fox. All right, that's fine too. Here's Isaac Shepard back at the top, number 11. He had the nice 720 last time. 540, nice corked that, out 540. That was a 900. Was it nine? Yeah, corked out nine. Man, that you was know more than me, man. I think like a clean. five me. Hey, so. you're now on the grab, so. <laughs> <laughs> Two of us, though, maybe half of the teamwork. Part. We, we, I'll mess up, you mess up, and it kind of counts as like we both got it right, I guess. I feel like it's the same way as my wife here. It's kind of like yeah, 900. Good side of the marriage. Very clear, <laughs> <laughs> very clearly a, a 900. Catch the other person slacking. Pick up their extra slack, yeah. Yeah. Communication, man. All Great about 900, though, from Isaac. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Got the nice, like, I don't, I'm not quite sure what it's called, but grabbing both skis behind, kind of pulling them up behind him. Adding the style. I really enjoy, you know, the, it's always kind of a, like a rivalry sometimes between skiers and snowboarders, you know, <laughs> the spraying each other on the mountain, all that stuff. But one thing I really enjoy is ski big air. I think there's sometimes the coolest looking tricks come from skiers. And just the distance and the different types of grabs and how it kind of, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of different variations with skiers and big air, which I really, really enjoy. As we see Carson dropping in there with a nice 720. That was a 10. That was a switch 10. 10. All right. You got it again. Was that a switch 10? I thought it was a switch 7, but it could it be might, a switch oh, 10. You're right. No, that switch was a 10. 10. Yeah. That was a 10. Hey, second try Saturdays. Dude. Seven. How you know, something to notice there, he did get the 10, but he was landing a little on the nose of the skis. I got that one. That's Samuel Miles with the 5. Switching nice, up. Nice, <laughs> slow 5. So there you go, quarter piping it for Mr. Back Andy Fitch over here. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you. I, I give him points. Yeah, thanks, Sam. I mean, I don't know if mine count, but hey, there's always street credit, man. Yeah, always street cred. There's something to be said for street cred. Yeah, there's no one that puts out more street cred than Mr. Andy Finch right here. He has more street Dude, cred. That's a huge claim. <laughs> Uh, no pressure. I hope I live up to that. Mr. Tim Stelter dropping in. Gets the tuck. He had the nice. Uh, There's the double backy. Oh, coming a little unstuck in the landings. You see him lay back with a little over rotation. Yeah, a little over rotation. I'm not well, sure he thought he was going to have this. Yeah, we, we definitely can see that from Tim. I know he wanted to get that out of the way kind of a little bit quicker. I think he almost misjudged the speed, it seemed like. He was really tucked in on the approach. And so I don't think he thought he was going to go quite as far as he did. Uh, but we see him going down almost to the second black line, which is a really, really good distance, you know, from Tim there. Got John Stelter waiting to drop in now, just waiting for the word. And again, if there's anybody, you know, who, who ha I would have to say has the, the biggest bag of tricks, it would be John. And he's up here all the time. All right, Stelter brothers answering back and forth as they get this exchange. Look at the size of that 900. That's probably one of the deepest uh, jumps, taking it deep into the lane, that's one of the biggest errors we've seen. Yeah, and what was, I think, a lot better from the last one that we saw from John, again, he went with the same uh, same grab, the truck driver grab. This time he locked it in, I think, a little bit longer. 
We saw him last time just kind of release a little bit quicker. So locking in the grab, getting some little extra points on that one. We got Mr. Kellen Baker now as well. He actually came right back after John on the first run. Um, really styly in and really big grab as well. Speaking of style, throwing out a lot of blue steel right there, yeah. blowing some, <laughs> some kisses, making a little hard pull up. <laughs> Coming at you. We got Kellen Baker dropping in. Loving on the camera, loving on the crowd, and now loving this switch seven. Very yeah. clean. Really cool grab as well. I very enjoy relaxed. So far, I've enjoyed Kellen's style coming off very, very relaxed. Now, if we see this landing again, we will call that the sweet spot. He hit the sweet spot. Least amount of compression right where he landed, right? See, about three feet down from the knuckle. You see him waiting to revert it, just showing that he does have control. Again, yeah, we're talking about the control of like a football. Exactly, wanted to show the judge that, yeah, hey, I can ride switch. Let me ride switch for a little bit, and I'm gonna ride back to ride your head to the left. Kind of tripping out on all these net, net beach balls right now. They're multiplying like rabbits. Yeah, there's a lot of them, huh? A lot of kids having a lot of time with, uh, good time with uh, I'm beach balls. i home. I'm a fan of beach balls. Here we go, Connor Tatum, we missed him last time. We're not missing him this time. Double backflip. Great, solid grab on it. Came around right to his feet. You know, you can see him rock back onto his tails as he tries to stop that rotation. Uh, but still a clean landing. Yeah, making it look really, really easy from Connor. Really easy from Connor. All right, that's wrapping up third runs. Again, five runs, two, two best down. runs count. Now, those to get two scores, you need to have two different tricks. Exactly, yeah. We mentioned that with the snowboarders, but there's five runs. The judges are looking for the top two runs, combined score. But the one kind of kind of disclaimer there is that it has to be a different trick. They don't want to see the same trick every single time. That was uh, the first two runs. We got uh, three more to go. Back up at the top for Mr. Isaac Shevert waiting to uh, get the drop. We've seen uh, two really good. Uh, we saw seven from Isaac once, and then we saw five on the next run. We got a good contest here. We're seeing a lot of stomps, so yeah. pressure's on for the boys. Going switch. I don't even know what to call that, but that was We're impressive. gonna call that a switch nine. Kind of throwing a little front flip in there. <laughs> yeah, that was he, watch, if we can pull up the replay of this one, I don't, we're gonna watch him come in switch, and he's almost gonna pop off of his tails. I mean, if it was a snowboard, we'd call it kind of a chicane. I'm not sure what they call that on Yeah, skates. I'm not sure either. Sorry, folks, but whatever that was, that was impressive from Mr. Isaac Shepard. Kind of mixing up, showing us things that are very, very unique that I have not seen from any other riders. That's so. giving the judges something different to look at. I could almost see that scoring higher than a double back just for the uniqueness. Yeah, that was really clean. Really clean from Mr. Isaac. We got Carson Kerr dropping in. He actually is uh, the switch king so far this afternoon. Coming in both jumps switch. We saw a switch 900, I believe, and a switch seven from Carson. So let's see what he got here. Going in switch again. Switch. Going for the slow yeah. 180. I thought he was almost going to go just a no spin, just uh, just switch all the way through. I don't think there's anything scarier than just on skis riding a big jump like that, just straight switch the whole way. But switch just, 180. Just with his body language, I don't know if that's what he wanted, whether it was the wind. Sometimes when you have wind blowing into you like this, a straight error or just a slow 180 can be the more, most difficult thing you can do. Yeah, and then we got to see Samuel Miles dropping in pretty quick. Rapid fire. Yeah, did you notice what trick that was there, Andy? That was either, I, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was still... Sometimes you just gotta you just gotta have the feet and say, hey, Sam, that was awesome. We're not sure what it was. All right, dropping in. Stelter. First of the two brothers to drop. There's the double again. Oh, Whoa. oh. holding on. <laughs> Almost throwing the end yeah. out over the bar. Yes. Goes goes to this tips. We thought I was for sure he's about to kind of somersault over his tips here, but holds yeah, on. Yeah, check out this landing right here. Lands, no problem, but oh, and then he's hold. sticking just a little bit. <laughs> Holds on. You know, that's one thing with the wind and the sun. The, you know, again, we have misters keeping this snowflakes uh, moist and helping it slide along. But as the sun and the wind comes, it does dry out quicker. Yeah. Here we go, John. Still, he's kind of shaking his head that his brother pulled that one off. Switch. There's that switch nine and check out the app. We call that the after, after bank, bank when he land like yeah, that. Yeah, when he lands Very and he clean. says he doesn't claim it ne necessarily with his uh, voice or whatever. He just really just um, kind of, you know. Yeah, check out that landing. Just 
Look at we'll that. We call that the dead man. The dead man landing. I like it. Well, again, this is uh, third runs of the big airs for ski. Snowflex games here. Look at the style on that massive five. Landing down on the second line, black lines. That's, I mean, okay, 40 foot jump. He just took it an extra 40 feet. He's yeah. Going by 80 feet on that one. I don't know if it's the order of Kellen where he's dropping, you know, right behind the Stelzer brothers who last year just absolutely put on a show. But Kellen Baker, I feel like almost every run has just stepped it up again and again and again. So I've been really, really impressed with him. Man, I, you know, there is a hundred dollars up for grabs for best trick in each category. Oh, really? Cool. So, awesome. you know, I would put Kellen. I put a star by him just for that massive five, just because how big he went. It is called the Big Air, so uh, just the style. That's that's the kind of thing that could win the the best trick award. Yeah, definitely. Here goes Connor. Not Okay, here's the 900 coming a little off his axis as he comes into the landing. Looking good in the air, but uh, Connor looking to stick it for that, that fourth run. That's a heck of, I mean, we're still going here, but great fourth run. Yeah, definitely. Look forward to run number five. Absolutely. See you guys soon. I would say that Liberty really um, continue uh, to water the seeds that was planted in me by my family. You know, it challenged me biblically, uh, challenged me to use my faith on and off the field. Uh, but Liberty really uh, disciplined me um, in a way to be prepared for the real world. And in being in the NFL and um, that platform, that's magnificent. And I tell people a lot of the times, there's nothing special about me. Um, I'm just in a special position, and I use it as much as I possibly can to bring people to know who Christ is. And uh, Liberty helped, again, water that seed. What I say to a parent, um, that they can rest assured that their kids are in a safe environment. They're gonna get challenged, they're gonna grow, and they're gonna be men and women of Christ, and uh, gonna make a difference in the world. Tonight. When I meet Liberty students now, when I'm on the road, I'm like, dang, Liberty has changed. It's so diverse. I love it. And, and, and it, it just is impressive to me that um, people come in, and even though they all look different, they all act a little bit different, they're, they're people that, that leave this place changed, leave this place ready to pursue the profession with all they got, but at the same time have this beautiful love for Jesus. Snowflex games, we are seeing some mean tricks going down. We're gonna go back and look at some of the replays. It's Carson some of the Kerr action. Dropping in switch. There's the switch 1080. Yeah. Guys Carson, like I mentioned, yeah, going difficulty. a lot of switch. Yeah, a lot of switch tricks from Carson. All right, here comes the switch, slow seven. Slowing things down, we've seen some tens. We saw another, uh, I wanna call it a backside 10, but <laughs> just cause that's the way it is for me when I'm goofy, but. Not applying to the skis, but still solid runs here coming down. I think we've already seen three 1080s in this, yeah. this fourth run. Skiers stepping it up, and I think it's really, really competitive across the board from from top to bottom. A lot of riders at least have one really solid. We saw the 10 clean from Carson. We've seen the double here from Tim. And there's that double to back. Ooh. Kind of a late 180 yeah, in that that's double backy. That was a nice variation. Called the kangaroo flip, I believe. Is it? Same variation, just gonna just kind of switch it over to switch there at the last second. Kangaroo flip, which uh, which Tim I know has on lock. I'm not sure how often he does those. Tim is about to become a father, so I don't know if he's been taking it easier lately or Got not. Got a little <laughs> Joey coming. There you saw him just over rotating just a hair as he hooks that edge on the landing. So maybe uh, he's still got one more run. Yeah, right maybe. now we're on run number four. A lot of times it helps to make just a little mistake. You come back and you know exactly where to adjust so you can stomp that. Uh, yeah, that's actually what we saw time. from him the first time. He missed the trick, stomped to the next. John Stelter dropping in. The size of this big Another old Another seven truck driver. With the dead man landing. <laughs>
make winter last year-round at Liberty Mountain Snowflex Center. Enjoy one of our tubing runs or hit the slopes with one of our friendly and knowledgeable instructors. There are features for every level of riding, from beginner to park enthusiasts. There's something here for everyone. Also, don't miss out on our next level ski and snowboard summer camps. Register today. For more information, visit our website at liberty.edu slash snowflex. Every year I'm amazed by the production, just the big old TV truck, and I mean, yeah. this is a legit production that can answer to NBC, ESPN, all the guys, Fox, it's, it's right up here. This Liberty College is very impressive uh, from, yeah, their TVD production all the way to uh, athletic facilities. Incredible. All right, check it out. Next rider dropping in, switch. Kellen Baker. Very nice switch to switch, 720. Yeah, 720, we get with a really, really unique dra grab from Kellen. A little tail grab on the quarter pipe, a little extra flair. Yeah, I've really enjoyed Pieces his style. Of flare. Yeah, I've really enjoyed his style. Again, it's the same what we we're kind of talking about, very laid back style. Doesn't look like he's trying very hard, making it look really, really easy, which the judges definitely appreciate. Style from the uniques, but we've seen really, really big tricks from Kellen as well. Last rider to drop on our fourth run. Again, they have five to. Uh, best two runs count. Mm -hmm. not, there needs to be two different tricks, though. If they do the same trick every Correct. time, uh, they will lose half their points. But that is definitely not an issue here in the skier big areas. We've seen a <laughs> huge variety of All sevens, nines, switch tens, uh, double backies, double back late 180. Uh, great variations. Some stylish grabs, shifties. Is Connor drops in for the switch nine? Barely getting that around. Caught the sweet spot, you know, whether it's a little bit of wind or the skis just aren't running quite as fast, he still hit the landing on his feet. Yeah, you can you can hear the, the wind actually in our microphone. So that's the headwind blowing right back up in their faces. So sometimes the speed can be pretty hard to gauge and kind of the rotation can be slowed down a little bit as well. So props to Connor for, for pulling that one out. But we're moving on to the, the fifth and final. And we've seen so many different variations from each rider. We haven't seen a lot of repeat tricks at all. So here goes the fifth and final. Uh, the opportunity to kind of set yourself apart. So I, I look forward to this. And we see Isaac Shepard ready to drop in. Full speed ahead. Kind of got the tuck position. Just filling the edges. And here's... Oh, I think he wanted the double. I think, uh, think? I think, think he felt so. the wind right Yeah, before? I think he did. I think he uh, was tucked and kind of geared up for the double, but I think he smartly, if in my opinion, with the wind and kind of the speed that he had, just kind of released it a little bit early. But a little bit frustrated. With, yeah, you uh, saw him wind up, and then yeah. you saw him kind of open up in the air. Just That's how you slow down your rotation. And you saw he barely cleared the knuckle which definitely says he probably didn't have the speed he was right, looking for. Right, definitely. And then uh, we have Carson Kerr as well, about to drop in. Last time he threw down that really, really big uh, switch 10, if you remember that. So We've seen him do a few of those, actually. I had him down as doing one in his second run. We saw it in his fourth run. Uh, he might switch it up because he definitely landed it clean. I don't know if he needs to do another one. Uh, again, you do need the two different tricks. So yeah. He's see if we get something a little different. Yeah, he's got the switch tricks on uh, unlock so far. Ethan, have you seen a, a 12 done out here? I have seen a 12 done one time by John Stelter on the skis. On snowboard, it has not been done to my knowledge, but John Stelter has thrown down a couple 12s, yeah. Well, he's still to come on his fifth and final run about halfway down the pack. But uh, right now it is Carson Kerr at the top. Chance he's uh, just hanging out on the wind. You can see the misters on as they're making sure this is nice and slick. These guys have good speed. You can see their jerseys and hair flapping in the wind. That drop and it sticks way up there. Probably a pretty good little updraft. Right. It make you nervous. I made me nervous earlier when I was in that thing. Yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty pretty steep pitch. It's kind of hard to tell with the guys are chilling up there right now. But yeah, when you're uh, when the first time I remember dropping in, it's a little intimidating. <laughs> it's a nice little steep roll in, just gives you a perfect amount of speed for the two booters down in there at the bottom. Or you can opt for the little cliff drop. Yeah, cliff drop is fun too. Five six foot cliff drop. Yeah, I kind of like dropping in on that. It's like extra action as you uh, approach the jump. Definitely. Kind of a quick look back of what's been uh, what's been happening so far. That's uh, Carson again with the switch uh, five with the truck driver. Maybe even nine. I'm not quite sure. They've got John's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're really flying through them here. This big old five. There's the switch seven. You just see, like, just the talent just within this short montage of, you know, different tricks from each rider, the amount that they're spinning, 
you know, different grab variations from each one of them. Really talented bunch. Really talented bunch as uh, Carson's dropping in now. Going regular. He is mixing it up. Double front. front. Oh, oh just man, I'm now. surprised he went down. He came around so clean. It looked like he was really going to stomp it. I think he has the same question. Hands in the air. What just happened? How did I not put that? I mean, he came down clean on his skis. I just saw him just kind of wash out a little bit. I think if you were at a view from straight on, he must have come in just a little bit sideways. Oh, no, he bottomed out, kind of back seat. Watch as he sits on the back of his skis. Yeah, just didn't quite get it all the way around. Very, very clean, but... That's two uh, double fronts, one from the snowboard and one from the ski side. Yeah, and Carson, I like that. Carson mixing up. We saw him drop his four, uh, first four runs. Kind switch. of throw back to Ben Hinckley. I don't know if you ever heard that name. Yes. Okay, good. I haven't. Good. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have not heard that name. <sighs> Sorry, I've let I you down today, I think we need to do Andy. a little bit of snowboard education. That is an important part. Know where you come from. Know your history. Wow, calling me out. All right. Yeah. I'll have to read a little bit, I guess. I don't know if that's anything you can just read unless you got archives of Snowboard Magazine. At least everything's on the internet. But, you know, back in the early 90s, even late 80s, when stuff was really starting to hit media, uh, that was not on the internet. All right, coming in switch for a straight air. <laughs> switch straight air. I was talking about that earlier. That's a pretty... That's difficult, yeah, especially pretty in this intimidating, wind. And that especially. was executed perfectly with a solid grab. Uh, that's a tough one for judges. You know, that's always a... A big topic in, in their meetings is what do we do when it's just full style opposed to or versus the you know the technical tricks yeah it's such a balance just with the way the sport is progressing so rapidly as we see Tim Stelzer dropping in oh, I was seeing yeah. some style here there's very, the switch nine he actually made that look like a five is is rotating so slow on that nine yeah, definitely. Definitely a lot of style from Tim. We saw a good variation from Tim from big to, to style. Kind of what I was getting at. Such a challenge for judges today with the progression of what people are able to do with the doubles that are out there, even triples now in both ski and snowboard. Such a balance to where, you know, you don't want to lose the style with the amount of spin. So it, it's a tough job that they have to kind of uh, separate the two. Younger brother John Stelter dropping in. Switch. Definitely a popular grab today is that double. Yeah, the double truck driver, tail. yeah. Or double nose, excuse me. <laughs> Getting a little bit sticky. That was a solid run, just, uh, you know, sometimes as you're dumping the speed, you know, we saw earlier in the rail jams, you guys get a little heavy on the edge, it slips out. Yeah, John Stelter having a good day, though. We had saw a he lot had of big, an yeah. Excellent day. Both brothers, solid on the rails. They represented the Stelter family very well. They did. They always do, both on and off Snowflex. Uh, good group of guys, good family. Kellen Baker, as he slides those gloves on, getting ready for his fifth and final run, best two counting. Drop it in. See a little bit of setup turns. There's a big old <laughs> slow five. With uh, just I like a how one were, ski grab. I like how they've been adding style, and, you know, coming down to that fifth and final run, it's like, are they going to go? They either got to step it up somewhere. Are they going <laughs> to step it up by going crazy in difficulty, or are they going to step it up in style? And, and this has kind of been the stylish run, which is it's fun. Yeah, that was fun. That was a fun trick from Kellen. I enjoyed it. <laughs> that was good. Look at that just scenic background as Kellen just kind of just stomps out that that five. That's uh, I mean, if you guys notice, it is beautiful around here. I think it's very green, great views as we're kind of sitting on top of the world up here at this Snowflex facility here in Lynchburg. Check out this double. Mm, stomped it. He's, he's, no hand touches. You lean back a little. Little back seat, but he did not touch. I mean, the judge is looking for a little hand drag or, or we'll call it a butt check, but uh, none there. That is it. That wraps up the ski big air as well as Connor kind of puts a cap on it with a, a nice little double right there. So. Yeah, thank you, Connor. Great way to finish it up. Uh, got wards coming up, but gosh, rail jam, ski snow, big air, ski snowboard. Beautiful day. Liberty Snowflex Games. Excellent day. Thank you so much, Ethan. I'm Andy Finch. And uh, check this out. What we got for you?
They don't hand out medals for this. Flashing lights and cheering crowds don't follow all of us. But look around. Look closely. You might find that there are champions everywhere. Champions who work, who serve, and who believe. Champions who've trained at Liberty University. Your training starts now. Call us today or visit champions at liberty.com to get started. Guys, we are back. We just wrapped up Skier Big Air. That brings our competition day to a close, but what a day it was. We saw a lot, and I mean a lot, of heavy hitters, good riding from not only the snowboarders, skiers, even the ladies earlier this afternoon that we weren't able to kind of broadcast for you guys live. So great day, great hanging out with you, Mr. Finch. Yeah, Snowflex games not disappointing. Here's your final stance for Ski Big Air. John Stelter on top. Kellen Baker and Cotter Tatum to round out the top three. Yeah, look how close the top, like two, three, and four. I mean, John kind of put himself above the rest, but with Kellen, Connor, and Tim really right there. Yeah, when you look at those scores, that just shows what a tough job the judges had. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, again, it is personal opinion, and, you know, someone's always going to walk away really happy, and someone's always going to walk away bummed, but that's part of a judged event. And, you know, if you don't want to be judged, don't. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but you got to just take a good bat. And, you know, looking at all these guys, they've really just had a really good time. You can Definitely. see it in their face. You see Isaac Shepard in the rail jam. You got 450 off the pyramid box. Yeah, just cruising around. It was a rail. Yeah, it's, uh, I enjoyed Isaac today, especially uh, I kind of he kind of gave a lot of variation within the big jump, our big air, which I really enjoyed. So then we uh, move on to snowboarding Nathan Jenkins. We talked about him quite a bit with his technicality and really stepping up the technical side of uh, snowboarding for the snowboarders over in the rail jam. He also brought that over into the big air that we saw as well. Really impressive with him all day long. Enjoyed his attitude and really just stoked on snowboarding, which gets us stoked over here in the booth as well. So uh, props to Nathan and all of his riding today as well. There's a good look at our judges and the tough job they have as they kind of double check their scores. Uh, again, there's a reason I'm not on the mic and not up there. That is a tough job. Yeah, I don't want to be up there. I just want to be. <laughs> but check out the Alpen glow on the mountain right now. It's just a beautiful sunset as we got going on. Incredible day. One thing that's fun is the Liberty Mountain has all the lights up. So, you know, in the summer when it gets real hot, you can ride all night. I know the guys ride till like midnight. Yeah, yeah, no, there was times where we were out here just having a good time with a, a bunch of friends. And like we had mentioned, the progression here is so great. And that is such a tribute to the, the community that Snowflex has built and kind of brought. And again, it's very, very good to sport uh, athletes here. So if you're watching and thinking about coming to a school or looking at colleges, Liberty University, in my opinion, is uh, as high as ranking as it gets, especially for if you're really passionate about board sports and about, about Jesus. So. Absolutely. I know I would think about bringing my kids here just for the, the fun factor and the fact that they got Christ in their life here and uh, great support for them here. Uh, the BMXing, the skateboarding, yeah, all just, the team just sports. Everything. But we got some highlights uh, package here for you coming at you. Check your screen. There's the Mr. Carson the Kerr 7. With that, uh, the, the standard today with uh, the truck driver, which they all made look so unique and so big. So. Look at the skiers, man, like <laughs> going so big. Tim Stelter just doubling. I love that double back late 180 that he almost landed. There's the dead man in the landing. <laughs> <laughs> John, St uh, John Stelter, again, one of those guys that every competition he brings, you know, just his personality into it as well, which is always just great to see. There's the view of Snowflex that you're just seeing looking over the valley. Uh, there's a lot of probably even students because a lot of time, and we were talking about this earlier, for, you know, Liberty students, you can come up here and you can ride and learn to lose. Uh, ride and learn to uh, ride for free which is definitely very unique and especially for a facility like this it's such a such a great opportunity 
There you see the, the local leprechaun uh, definitely hanging out at the Sage Trials Salon. Yeah, there we you go. Know, yeah. Don't be afraid of a little product in the beard. There's <laughs> the backflip 180 from Ben Sulo. Incredible showing from him today. Yeah, Ben Sulo came out and uh, just really put on a show, especially in the big air. It was really, really fun to watch. A lot of, a lot of unique tricks from you guys. So just a great day. It's, it's great to be out here with you uh snowflex say thanks so much for putting this on and again this is such an opportunity that you guys should definitely be taking advantage of year round for sure yeah, yeah if you guys are fired up to ride a snowboard or ski year round snowflex is a great option uh you guys today's just a testament of what is possible on this stuff i mean definitely similar to snow as we see guys just doubling the big air jump right yeah. now uh but yeah the, the possibility especially with the trampolines the airbag coming to the mountain the skate park mm. Uh, the coaches, incredible facilities, keeping the cost down, being able to stay local in the U.S., not having to travel to the Southern Hemisphere. Right, exactly. And uh, one of the really, really great things that's really up and coming for our Snowflex and just kind of Liberty is their summer camps have been absolutely incredible. I know we've had just tremendous turnouts. There's really not too many options outside of Hood of, of places you can really actually come learn to snowboard in the summer months. So check that out. You can go on to Liberty's I'm website. I back to hang out with the campers for a couple of weeks. Yeah, if you want to hang out with Mr. Finch, come on back out, snowboard. I wish, uh, I wish I was able to make it back out, but it is such a good time. If you have some young ones who love snowboarding and sports and just you know, paintball, everything. And I know a lot of families come out and support their kids in it and, you know, ride with the, the pops. Yeah. The groms. It's it's a great vibe. Yeah. It's, again, it's such a good fam, uh, such a good family atmosphere here. Definitely. Absolutely. Look at that Alpen glow on the mountain as we're just winding things down. You can see all the product getting ready to be thrown out. And thanks. Big shout out to all the sponsors, Dragon K2, Smith Optics, Sage Trial, Salon, Pepsi, Snowboard Mag. New Schoolers Mag, $18,000 getting thrown out of these kids. And uh, Ethan, I cannot say thank you enough, man. Dude, it's been awesome. It was a pleasure, my man. Pleasure. Shout out to Snowflex as well for putting on such a great event, having me and Andy out uh, to be able to talk with you guys and just hang out, have our, just a just a great opportunity to, to hang out with you guys. So we're, uh, we're absolutely stoked to be here. Amen, brother. <laughs> All right. We're just going to wrap up with some highlights again. My name's Ethan Acre. This is Andy Finch. We're out here at Liberty Mountain Snowflake Center. Thanks so much, everybody. Andy, it was a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Everybody, have a great night. We appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you next year. Have a good one.